All right, guys, it's new new day. Is uh, you guys excited? Is Everyone's it Tuesday? Excited. Uh, Tuesday. <laughs> is it a Tuesday? Tuesday afternoon. It feels like it's a Friday. I know it's, it's all gloomy and weird outside. In a day and a half. Oh boy, what a day it's been. Uh, let me turn off uh, Bruce. I made a Bitcoin play or a cryptocurrency themed playlist. Of what? Uh, <laughs> cryptocurrency music, Bruce. What? Yes. Yes, indeed. What are you talking about? Wait, <laughs> wait. Why are we listening to music? Uh, well, Isn't we are the not. the worst thing to listen to? <laughs> the, uh, wait, in terms of getting rich? No, like, if it's a podcast. For a podcast, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it, it's just, it's the pre-roll music. It's oh, give, uh, uh, give, the, uh, give the audience a little something, something to listen to. I thought you were going to play it underneath yeah. when we're talking. Also, check this out. I made the Google Doodle. That's me. Huh? That's not yep. you. No. That's uh, Harrius Truman. Hargobind Cor... Corona. Corona. That's what they call me. 96 years old. That's someone's job to draw a new thing every day. It is. Right. Every day, remember when it used to be a special thing? Mm -hmm. Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> yeah, look, no, it doesn't. Right. That's on Pepperidge Farm Day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to a new wider Bold Dude Soup 90 minute episode upcoming. It's really long. Yeah, really long. Uh, these chairs. Settle in. Recliners. Oh, yeah, I know. Or I know. Something. I'm going to need that. My back's going to go numb. Uh, and <clears throat> um, we're talking about cryptocurrency today. What is it? How does it work? No Should you fear it because it's new and scary? No one knows. Yeah, <laughs> that, no one knows. <laughs> no one knows. Actually, James, could you scoot this way a smidge just so the live live oh, camera's picking you up? I can scoot this over a little bit too. <laughs> That'll help. There we go. Uh, I'm your host and uh, mm, I guess uh, crypt cryptark. You're a yeah. you're, you're a crypto noob. Yeah, I suppose you're that's a noob true. to it. I don't know. Well. Yeah. <laughs> what does Bruce consider himself? A noob. Oh, okay. 100%. Oh, okay, okay. It's been around for like seven, six years. Of all the, all I, things have a complex. I've been reading about it that, well, whatever. Whatever, crypto noob, I'll, I'll, I'll bite it. Uh, Lawrence Sontag, that's me. Uh, I'm joined by, uh, I guess, I'm going to I'm gonna peg you early, James. Uh, yeah. Crypto denier, James Willems. <laughs> denier. Nah, that's all right. <laughs> denier? <laughs> you don't have to. I don't know if deny is the right word. Mm. Uh, a uh, uh, crypto... We should call him a... Skeptic crypto. Oh, there we mm. get it. A scripto? A skeptic. Okay. A skeptic crypto. Yeah, you scripto said the two words. Skeptic crypto. <laughs> you said skeptic crypto. crypto. So skeptic crypto. what's to get? I don't, you're just saying it. You didn't even say scripto. On, it's or cool. Something. Skepto. <laughs> skepto. That sounds like you're a klepto. Oh, that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, skepto. Skepto extraordinaire. Bruce Green. Wait. Oh wait. No. No. I'm not Skep a skeptic. Wait. Cryptophilia. Act? I'm not yeah. afraid of it. No, not no. That that's phobic. That means you. You want to fuck it? Oh, cryptophiliac? Sure. Yeah, yeah I'll, I want it. Sure. Great. Why and not? Then, I uh, fuck it. I'm not qualified to talk about this. Yeah, at uh, all. <laughs> None of us are. To be clear. No, no, no. None Jess, of us are. Jess bought some. I didn't. Wow. Uh, un Fifty un bucks though. Uncrypt that's good. That Uncryptolified. Uncryptolified. Crypto. Crypto expert. Adam Kovic. Hey, Adam. I got no horse in this race. <laughs> I have Absolutely. some gold in my mom's safe at home. You got to buy in. Uh, crypto's worth more than gold. Um, for now, I guess. And actually, I mean, it was until, less as volatile it is right now. It is. For a month. That's Ferrari. It will be forever. forever. Yeah. Uh, what, this. Who did you just? No one. That was just that. That meant that's this. That's the symbol oh, of crypto. God. Yeah, that's the symbol of crypto. Oh. It's a line going straight up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this podcast has three sponsors. Uh, hence the longer runtime. This podcast is sponsored by Blue Apron, Mac Weldon, and Stitch Fix. Uh, you can check out this week's Blue Apron menu. Get thirty dollars off. Your first order with free shipping at blueapron.com slash soup. You can go to macweldon.com and get 20% off there using our code DUDE. And you can get started at stitchfix.com slash dude soup and get 25% off your box when you keep all items that are shipped to you. I'll learn more about those offers in a minute. But first, crypto, crypto, crypto. That's uh, uh, Superman's dog. Mm -hmm. It is, you're right. Yeah, that's <laughs> what he needed, a dog. <laughs> it is actually named after Krypton. Uh, because it's actually it's minor fragments of the planet that rain down and they you mine them by hitting them with no, uh, what no. are we get, what? It stems from cryptic cryptography. Yeah, what yeah. are we gonna watch on the screen? Uh, I was gonna bring up articles and shit great. Oh, uh, hold Come on. Let me there. let's just put on an episode of mr. Robot Yeah, cuz yeah, mr. Robot is is currently dealing with some of the broader issues of crypt cryptocurrency, which is namely that currency could potentially be taken away from governments or regulatory committees, but in a way, it's still regulated and still controlled by someone. You just don't know who. We'll get into all that soon. China. Hold on. Let's see your. Yeah. It's China. Yeah. Yeah. It is China. Hey, kids, if you're listening, always bet on China. The weird thing is, though, of <coughs> not to get too much into it, but China's sort of they're starting to ban it very, very slowly. You know why? Well, it's too it, it's too secure. Yeah, well, it subverts <laughs> it subverts their system. Oh, exactly. Well, because they want to control the system. Yeah, just yeah. Want, you like got to watch the documentary series, Mr. Robot, Cyber <laughs> Two, Season Three, the show your dad told me to watch. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. 
Damn it. Oh, okay. Well, fine. Yeah, lawnmower man's Here we good. go. Cyber tube. Ooh. I wish I could. <laughs> From the SNES OST. Great. The cyber tube. Uh, no oh, wait, speed running that it's game. Just a, it's just, just a, a still song. image. Fuck. Aww. Well, whatever. That's that's what cryptocurrency is. It's a man in uh, a laser jumper in a rotating gyrosphere <laughs> spinning around in your it eyeball. Could be. It's pretty no. close. You never know. It's a Dutch man from the 1700s Selling carrying a bunch holds? of tulips. You, <laughs> so what it is. James is referencing the uh, the tulip tulip mania, which we'll get into, and <coughs> in in, is actually related to this in, in a way. Which sounds like a music fest that happened six months ago. <laughs> yeah, you're close. <laughs> All right. So cryptocurrency kicked off in 2009 with Bitcoin. Which was the world's first decentralized cryptocurrency? Uh, you, you're all now in the purview. And you're in the classroom, Professor Lawrence, PhD, Internet. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a, a layman's explanation of how how Bitcoin works. Hit it. What happens when I put my leg up thusly and go, Mr. Sontag? <laughs> I'm yes, sorry, Mr. I'm failing. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. And then my snatch makes a weird noise. Uh. <laughs> I'm it's a like, man. It's like Velcro tearing. Yeah. Oh. Sorry to derail. Go ahead, teach. Well, dudes have that version of that. You what? ever tried to piss like an hour after making tender love, and it's I thought just we were going to talk about cryptocurrency. Oh, All right, we are. let's talk about crypto. That's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Okay, so uh, how does it work? Uh, Bitcoin transactions or cryptocurrency transactions are peer to peer, meaning that they are not authorized or validated by a central authority. If you have a bank, that's what a bank does. When you run your credit card, it hits a credit card server somewhere owned by a corporation that manages it, and then it either approves it, denies it, and manages the ledger, which is your running account balance. Uh, so that doesn't happen in Bitcoin, though. What, what happens is essentially all those transactions are offered up into the cloud, where a bunch of people have client-based applications that crunch all those numbers and offer them back up to the cloud. Each individual person that's doing it downloads the master ledger of all transactions ever, which is called the blockchain. Uh, so the blockchain, is, uh, I'm trying to decide how granular we get with this. When you, when you mine, mining a Bitcoin is the process of authorizing and revising all of those transactions. And it's done in chunks called blocks. Each block is linked to the one that comes after it with crypt cryptography meaning that you can't fuck with it, otherwise it doesn't match the hash. Uh, hashing is something I won't get into, but it's essentially it's a way to mathematically prove that all data in a set of data is valid via very complicated algorithms that are very fast to process one way and impossibly hard to process in reverse. So once something is hashed, uh, a computer can do a real easy check to see that all the data is valid, but if you were to try to fake it and generate a hash in reverse, it would take like the on the order of tens of thousands of years with supercomputers. That's, that's like how cryptography works, is how uh, credit card transactions are protected via the internet. That's why Bitcoin is secure. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and to a degree, it is secure because the math has never been cracked. Yeah. It's human error that creates flawed systems that allow people to fuck with it. All right, so Which we have with credit cards. Exactly. And even cash. Oh, yeah. Yep. And banks and everything else. Fake gold, <laughs> tulips, you name it. <laughs> so that's essentially what you're looking at. Um, the, the kind of the finer points of Bitcoin are that Bitcoin is generated... Uh, through mining, um, which is the process of verifying and uh, updating the blockchain, which is how people are able to process transactions. Where did the blockchain come from? It was just an idea. It's a technology, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know the answer. Uh, Satoshi. Oh, yeah. So sorry. The the uh, the invisible ghostly visionary of, of Bitcoin, which is I'm referring to it in that way because Bitcoin's history gets like takes a hard left into some pretty philosophical drama pretty quickly. Um, Ah, damn it. <laughs> it's the Hold same on. deal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I clicked on another video. And it, just his went. name is, what is it? Satoshi Nakamoto is yeah. the pseudonym. Supposedly. Mm -hmm. For the man who supposedly. It was just like uploaded to GitHub, right? It was go. just like, here you go. It was. So until there's something more uh, something more visually interesting to show, we got a long, a long play of the Lawnmower Man on Super Nintendo <laughs> rolling right now. Come on, Game Zen Quick. Get yeah. your shit together and play Lawnmower <laughs> Man. <laughs> I'm sure right. someone will. Yeah. So uh, way back in January 2009, uh, yeah, Satoshi Nakamoto, who is is kind of almost attained weird, ghostly, like martyr he's, yeah, slash he's, uh, cult leader status. He's mythical. Yes, because because uh, like as I said, Bitcoin is decentralized. People have had wildly differing opinions about how Bitcoin should be managed going forward, um, and we'll get to that in a minute because it plays into all the drama of Bitcoin, the rise and fall of its value and its current state. It's Elon Musk. It's Some all Elon Musk. Think it's Elon Musk. Some people do. Which is even cooler. <laughs> Uh, so let's see here. Uh, this is from Wikipedia, uh, which, you know, as we all know, is fake. Just, oh, shit. Um, sorry. There's a very pixelated version of the simple Jack from Lawnmower Man. Or simple man. I don't know. Uh, mine the first block on the chain known as the Genesis block uh, embedded in 
The coin base of that block was the following text, uh, the times of three slash January slash 2009, Chancellor on the brink of second bailout for banks. Uh, it's just clear text embedded in, in, in the running ledger of that block. It's a reference to a Times article uh, that was published on January 3rd, 2009, which is referring to um, the fact that after the collapse of 2008, banks were still having trouble and governments were still having to bail them out. So a lot of people interpret this to be a grand uh, fuck you to the current financial institution, namely banks too big to fail. Um, the fact that people could willingly fuck around with money and suffer no consequences because of it, because they have so much, so much of a, uh, so much of society's interests wrapped up in what they do that they're not allowed to, to go under because it would hurt more people than it would help. So Satoshi Nakamoto, seeing a better future for the world, uh, theoretically pioneered Bitcoin and immediately disappeared. Um, so he, in the early days, Nakamoto, this is, this is Wikipedia again. In the early days, Nakamoto is estimated to have mined 1 million Bitcoins. In 2010, Nakamoto handed over the network alert key and control of Bitcoin core code repository over to uh, Gavin Anderson, um, oh, sorry, Gavin Anderson. I didn't want to fuck it up. Mr. Andrew Olson. Yeah, who later became lead developer at the Bitcoin Foundation. Uh, Anderson uh, stated he then sought to decentralize control, saying, quote, As soon as Satoshi stepped back and threw the project onto my shoulders, one of the first things I did was try to decentralize that. So if I got hit by a bus, it would be clear the project would go on. Um, which proved to be an interesting and controversial decision. Because there are... Still is today. Yes. There are logistic, serious logistic problems with Bitcoin that revolve around engineering decisions that could be changed but aren't because of aforementioned problems like control, supply, um, government, things like that. We'll get into that. But, okay. Mm -hmm. So now here we are in 2010. Bitcoin's pretty small. It's been handed off. It's, it's now, like, governed by a commune of engineers, basically. Uh, and it's out in the wild and some people are already mining it and generating Bitcoin exchanges are popping up to transfer US dollar into Bitcoin back and forth there are in the ensuing years some problems that occur uh, the biggest one is about the block size so we talked about the blockchain which is a series of chunks that basically have transaction data in them running ledger information for people uh, the problem is the block size now is really small it started small to, to basically survive on networking that existed in 2010. Now it's 2017. Networks are a lot faster. Some of them are. They, they started selling uh, GPUs that were made specifically to mine Bitcoins. Because yeah, they, they found out that the CPU was sort of the bottleneck, right? So they did started selling GPUs. Well, because they found out that it would go faster if they started processing. They started trying to mine, mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, through GPUs and then yeah certain manufacturers are like this mines Bitcoin better like holy shit That is that is yeah. a marketing aspect. Uh, it's not so much the processing time uh, Because because you can throw money at that problem mm -hmm. and, and people have uh, Bitcoin Analytic farms city. set up in like Iceland and stuff mm -hmm. where it's just open air And it's a bunch of racks exposed to like Arctic air. There's geothermal that people use to generate this stuff uh, the problem is more um, The transmission and lag involved with smaller blocks so there's something called the Great Firewall, which is actually a really awesome name. Um, but it is the firewall that surrounds China's internet. And to transfer data back and forth over that firewall adds, adds like a second or two of latency just to, just to work it. And that proves fatal when it comes to something like massive uh, monetization networks that require fast response time to process transactions. So because there's a lot of Bitcoin farms in China, and actually most of the biggest ones are there, it kind of prevents Bitcoin from being used as a global currency just because of the lag introduced by transferring Bitcoin back and forth across that firewall. Hmm. Um, it says, yeah, two seconds, uh, just, a, just a ping back and forth. Uh, pun unintended. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that, that actually, that is a big problem. Uh, making the blockchain larger would help because that means you don't have to burst fire a lot of small packets. You can s set up a big one, fire it back and forth. But no one will do that. And here's why. Um, it mostly comes down to control. So the block, the block size is where it is. And certain people set up Bitcoin farms specifically to crunch data on that block size. So let's say you got, and by farm, I mean a farm. Walls and walls, racks and racks. Let me see if I can look up photos of Well, there are plenty of, of pictures of yeah. Bitcoin yeah, mining there's a, farms. There's a Vice video on it. That's pretty good. It's like madness. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's, I mean, <laughs> stuff like this. I mean, that's a, this is a little amateur, but that's essentially what you're looking at. It's just, just bare to, PCs. Just to clarify, too, I guess, because this is where it's starting to get a little kind of <laughs> confusing, because um, I still barely understand any of this. Yeah. When you're mining for a Bitcoin, you're basically just having a computer solve a math problem. Mm -hmm. And when you when the computer solves the math problem, it's rewarded with a Bitcoin. You're absolutely well, right. Well, uh, a portion, usually a portion. Well, like, well, you know, yeah, exactly. Like, And there's only a finite amount of these Bitcoins, and that's why you're saying, yep. sorry, I, I shouldn't even call them Bitcoins, uh, because... Satoshis, yeah, you don't get a full Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly, because Bitcoin is its own form of this math problem that's been solved, so that's why there's Dogecoin and Ethereum and all these. These are different um, mm. subsets of that, right? Of other people solving the, the same math problem, but well, somewhere else. Sort of. Some of them are. Some of them are forks. Yes, uh, okay. to, so, to solve the block problem. Right, but some of them are just totally, completely made up cryptocurrencies that have nothing to do with Bitcoin. Yeah. Yep. So. Which... That's sort of why the bubble's bursting right now, right? Because everyone's sort of... Well, it's not really bursting. It's not That's bursting. Yeah. It's just volatile. Sorry. So oh, sorry. Uh, It's going to burst. I well, yeah. perhaps. I, I go think... Go down like a Zeppelin. Mm, maybe. Uh, that, that, is, that is a valid prediction. Um, so let's... I guess let's... Uh, in terms of politics and history, let's skip it forward to today. So there are a number of almost religious camps about how Bitcoin should be run because a lot of people see it as the future of our financial system. Um, seeing all the problems with capitalism and the uh, the evil that is allowed to uh, to exist in the world or or the lackadaisical nature that is allowed to exist. Uh, so a lot of people see Bitcoin as like, oh, this is what's going to be the next thing. You know, we had uh, feudalism, we had capitalism, now we have cryptocurrency um, for for some reasons that we'll get into, which is the kind of the debate part of it. Um, but so right now, Mike Hearn, uh, pu published a medium article, January 14th of 2016. He's one of the lead engineers on Bitcoin. And he basically said, Bitcoin has failed. Uh, and he's got a lot of very well thought out, um, a lot thought out arguments as to say why Bitcoin cannot succeed in its current state. Uh, get into those in a minute too, but essentially that's what's led to all the forks of Bitcoin and also altcoin in a way. Altcoin is kind of, but not really connected. Essentially, the rise of Bitcoin just uh, it let a lot of investors say, like, wait, I could do that because it's just math. It's not hard to start your own crypto. Everybody does it now. So it's created this weird, uh, and Bruce can speak to this more, but it's created this digital commodities exchange about crypto where the commodity isn't real. It's all speculative value. But given that it wasn't, it's not hosted in any one nation, um, even though some nations are taking uh, steps to control it or at least curb its potential to, des to destroy or remove vast amounts of their capital from circulation, you essentially have what amounts to unregulated gambling, except gambling is based on odds, and this is actually based on uh, people's behaviors mm -hmm. that can also be manipulated. So it's more like a, di a stock market. It's like penny stocks. Yes, but without any of the protections or the legal requirements. Completely that unregulated. Any stock market has. Yeah. So insider trading, totally fine. Uh, theft, fine, if you can get away with it. Um, there are some reasons that like Bitcoin transactions are untraceable, which is a problem, but we'll get into that in a minute anyway. So that's essentially the current state of things. Uh, let's see if I can summarize it top to bottom. So you have a math-based decentralized currency um, that people mine to invent more of it. Uh, and then that relative value to real world currency is now being traded against uh, on digital exchanges. And yes, the value is extremely volatile and it's kind of, it's attracting the sort of like thrill seeking gambling slash investment sort of person. Uh, it's very exciting. A lot um, of YouTube channels. Yeah, YouTube channels. Bruce, you wonder what they got skin on the game. Right? Yeah, oh, no, I definitely have skin in the game. It's it's interesting because I, I've read a lot of articles about how it's a bubble, how it's a bubble, how it's a bubble. And I mean, it depends on whether or not you think it's uh, like your philosophy is like, it's a lot of old money saying that. Which is yeah. people that have been made all, made their fortune in the stock market, or uh, you know, Warren just Buffett. another in, or hedge funds or whatever. And Jimmy Buffett's buying it. Warren Buffett. Uh, ironically, um, some hedge funds and that, those sorts of things are very very similar to cryptocurrency <laughs> because they're not they're never buying anything. They're only they're only trading. They're only buying and selling. They're never ever getting anything for what they bought. Mm. Um, and uh, that so that's it's. It's just it's a new form of what they're of what's happening, and yeah, it almost certainly is a bubble, just like the dot com bubble happened. But about fifteen years later, uh, the Nasdaq is higher than it's, it's ever been. So cryptocurrency is probably here to stay. Uh, it just will probably see some sort of major decline here in the next year or two. Do you think that it's going to get regulated? 
Do you think that any international governments will stand for this uh, just floating unregulated around their countries? It's a great question. Um, and what's interesting about the altcoins is that some of them are saying, we'll just work with banks. Mm -hmm. Like basically uh, Ripple's one of them. Ripple's like, uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Like Bitcoin can be unregulated, decentralized, that's fine. Our cryptocurrency, we're going to actually make deals with banks. So mm -hmm. then that way you can use uh, Ripple legally. Mm -hmm. And you can use Ripple uh, in, in any country or whatever because mm -hmm. we've made deals with those countries. Yeah. Part of the appeal, so. at least this is where I, I thought cryptocurrency was interesting to me, was I feel like a lot of people are reaching this point. Or maybe we're just becoming complacent, but this idea of, you know, say you're, you find yourself at a gentleman's club and you're like, <laughs> this, this lovely lady would like to sit on my lap for X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. So you walk up and you go, I will take out my money that I work for. And it goes... $35 service fee. And you're like, no, if I were to just pay with cash, I wouldn't get hit with this fee. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh you mean $35 so like, service fee for paying in Bitcoin? Right. So I'm just saying like, it's your money. Why are you being charged to take it out? I get it because someone's mm -hmm. holding on to it and they're doing all that thing. Well, but like, it's because there's a, there's an institution right. that is holding the money for you and is reinvesting it into various types of things, thus an interest rate can exist sure. and what have you. But I don't typically see the benefits of that. It's more of uh, we're gonna we're gonna charge you to take money out of your own account. So it's it's interesting that you say that. That's the, one of the reasons why I'm pretty sure Bitcoin was invented. Because you don't right. have to worry about those services. That's what I mean. Your money is and that's what I'm saying. The theory of cryptocurrency interests me because now the idea is your money's in the cloud. <laughs> right? It's you basically have a number assigned yeah. to you. It is protected with this sort of math, essentially, that cannot be hacked yet, as far as we know. Um, you know, we're getting to the point where people are just gonna steal your, you know, biometrics and steal your money, but either way, that that's what appealed to me, was this sort of idea of like, almost simplifying it and going back to a cash system, hmm. but in the modern age. So now we're no longer at the behest of credit card companies and credit unions and all these things that it's, your money is your money. That, that's, oh. that, that to me is what, it seems to be the coolest it's, thing about it's cryptocurrency. Still, see, I, I feel like you're still going to run into the issue of the fact that the money has to be transferred. A server has to click on somewhere. Who's sure. going to pay? Someone's going to pay for that. Yes. Mm. And it's not going to be someone out of the kindness of their heart. Correct. So the like, yes, credit card companies suck. And yes, bank companies suck. But the initial idea behind them and the fees that they charged are valid. They make sense. It's it's part of their business model. You sure. can theoretically right now keep all the money you ever get in a mattress in your bed yeah. mm -hmm. and that's fine and you'll never have to worry about being charged an ATM fee to dig into your mattress and take it out. Mm -hmm. But then ultimately as inflation changes, that mattress is gonna be worth less and less and less and less. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's and also so laws that prevent you from carrying a certain amount of cash. No, like if you true. bring ten over ten thousand dollars, well, yeah, across like say you're like, oh, I'm visiting Europe for the weekend or whatever, rich uh -huh. person, and you're like, well, how much money do you need? Oh, probably over ten thousand dollars. You have to declare that. Yeah. So it's like with cryptocurrency, it's like, no, your money's your money. It's private. Well, it's your thing. Except that those are regulations based on international treaties and sure, you know, yeah, international yeah. law. So who the fuck knows what's going to happen? I'm just with saying. Bitcoin? I'm, like, yeah, you're incidentally hitting on on a lot of the reasons that people philosophically are drawn to crypto. They, they like, yeah, yeah. You're nailing it point for point. In fact, uh, I'm crazy. Well, it's it's funny because <laughs> crazy Adams. <crypto laughs> no, it's uh, you're not wrong because all the things you bring up are 100% legitimate. Those yeah. are all positive aspects of crypto crypto uh, currency. Mm -hmm. The problem is also point for point. Every one of those also has a very serious downside. Well, yeah, there's always a counterpoint mm -hmm. to everything. Sure. Um, and I think like what James is saying is that and and I don't I don't tend to trust in banks that the fees that they're charging are fair. Oh, yeah. Um, so because I, I know what you're saying. They're, they're not so. fair generally. Yeah. But the I, the reasoning for them is valid. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, like sure. the initial idea behind Why? what the fee right. was was mm. valid right despite the fact that they're <laughs> now they're screwing you out of everything yeah. i always feel like it was an extra kick to the nuts when they call it a convenience fee yeah what an oxymoron i'm yeah. um, sorry you're saying oh no but yeah i was kind of speaking to both of your points because what you said is totally valid but also mm. that's sort of what it's like i mean for lack of a better analogy communism where communism sounds great where we all have the same amount mm. of wealth and we all get to do the same you know we all get to do the same cool stuff and 
Nobody, it's it's like in Star Trek in the future, yeah. where the, there's one currency, but everybody's like, ah, you know what? Don't worry about Gold it. Gold press. Everything's never. free. Um, that's kind of what cryptocurrency is now, where, like Adam said, you don't have to worry about banks, and you don't have to worry about fees. Mm-hmm. All you have to worry about is a computer that can hash this blockchain, mm-hmm. um, and then you got your money. Uh, and that sounds great. It really does. But just like probably almost everything else that happens in the world, as we've all learned 100 million times, it's probably going to fall somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, where we're gonna get, we're gonna have a cryptocurrency, uh, some sort of digital currency, mm. but it's gonna be regulated by certain countries. Well, you know, well, and I mean, it's more, regulated by powerful individuals right now. That well, you're right. More but, more right. than anything, too, it's gonna be the kind of thing where, like, okay, Adam goes into the strip club as Adam does, mm. yeah. and he wants to use. I his, go there to think and write my scripts. <laughs> he wants to use his cryptocurrency. Ma'am, could you keep currency to ask the woman to kindly step away from him <laughs> for five crypto bucks or whatever the. Host, get out is. of my bathroom Please. stall. Five minutes. And I'm so working Adam, on my epilogue. Adam whips out his phone, mm. so that way he can transfer. He can swipe the cryptocurrency to her. Mm. Except that, and it's fine for Adam. Adam doesn't worry about anything. Except that the guy next to Adam, the the asshole who wants to see naked ladies dance, ew, um, <laughs> he couldn't afford the phone like Adam could. Right. Mm. So what happened was some sort of service was willing to step in and say, "We'll be your crypto wallet." Yes. yes. And so now the same. Now you're back at the same place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're back in the same place. It's not a bank. Sure, you have f- free access to your money whenever you want it. Yeah. You're just. Paying this for, service for this phone, for phone which has right. a fee, and for internet, for every time you swipe to your crypto. Yeah. But hey, stuff. at least it's the free market fucking you and not a government. And that's typically where a lot of these conversations end. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, no, yeah. it's the philosophical difference between yeah. like who do you want to fuck you? Because somebody's going to. The problem is the government is the fucking free market because they pay for the government. Yeah, once you finance the government yeah. and the, the government? people representing the government, oh, well, then it doesn't matter. We pay taxes. Yeah, I mean yeah. It, it's funny you say that because that's like the op- that's like what uh, the opposite of net neutrality, right? Yeah, where net neutrality yeah. is like I don't want corporations fucking me, I want the government fucking me. <laughs> um, and so it's yeah. kind of it's yeah, yeah it, it's it, I don't know. I, I guess it becomes like lesser of two evils. Like who do you? Which do you, do you take the, the the quick way of getting fucked or the slow way? I, <laughs> like, the thing too, I, I think the thing too is that if you look at any sort of history of investment, this this constantly happens again and again and again. Like there's a constant cycle of something new coming in, a new way to like gain financial independence or whatever and no one's involved except for the people that want to make the money and that believe in the system and then immediately gets butt fucked yeah. it immediately mm-hmm. it and it butt fucks not the people who are there first who had the most money to put into the system that knew when to get out right. it's the people who go who quietly go which and, and in cryptocurrencies case like there's no definitive statement on it yet but like in crypto's currency case, I think the people that are most excited about cryptocurrency, other than the, like Lauren said, really rich people who are just gambling on it, yeah. right? Who are just gambling for fun on it, are young people. Hmm. I think young people are really yeah. activated by cryptocurrency because of the idea behind it. And if this doesn't pan out, there's going to be a whole generation of people that got fucked by cryptocurrency yeah. real, real hard. To be fair, they hmm. fuck themselves. Yeah, but that's—I totally. mean—that's yeah. what always happens, though. Sure. This is this is what happens. The well, first time something similar to a stock market was invented, hmm. and you could invest in businesses, the people that got fucked weren't the kings and the queens and stuff. Hmm. It was all this this small peasant type people who stepped in and said, "Oh, this is an opportunity for me to not just put my money into grain." to sure. eat next, I'll take some of the grain money mm-hmm. and then I'll invest, invest it. it in this business and then the business went away and they lost all that and there's no one there to hold them accountable because there's no like FDIC or insurance or anything like that. And so then they didn't have any grain and they starved and they died. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, well, it's uh, different forms of gambling, right? Well, I was gonna say, there's this? There, yeah. there's a lot, I mean, there are a lot of kind of, Lawrence, you need to do an ad read because we could probably go uh, on forever. I was waiting for a lull that okay. I can I mean, like, I, in there. The, the counterpoint to that is, well, they made their own decision. So, no, yeah. no, and, right. and, and it's kind of like, and that's, that's what I find so exciting about this stuff is that I'm not, I don't ever tell anybody put $10,000 into this right now. Like you said I 500, I don't ever, I told Lawrence 500, <laughs> yeah. I, you guys didn't say anything. Cause I was like, I was like, do what you want to do. Like, it's kind of one of those things that if, if you want to try it, I would first look at the stuff, but yeah, sure. long before you ever put money into it. I just, well, I that's see what you same. did, right? Yeah. Like yeah, you, you know, are, I, you're I, an example of a smart person I, who will probably likely not get butt fucked by cryptocurrency. I hope so. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I feel like I'm crazy. I'm taking the crazy pills when it's like, there, there's the pattern. The patterns always emerge, whether it's a pyramid scheme or it's the Wolf of Wall Street knocking at your door and being like, buddy, the blue chips are hot. 
And he told that to 50 other guys who also put $50,000 into this thing. Mm -hmm. And sure, only two thirds of those people get fucked over, Mm -hmm. but they's still the one guy holding the bag going, uh, what do I go? Sorry, bro. I read this really, really good article about bubbles and cryptocurrency and all this other stuff because basically it was like, yeah, you know what? If it's a bubble, if you're writing it on the way up, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. So everybody if, knows. If, as it's it's and and, and he's absolutely right. <laughs> Our, uh, the stock market is the highest it's ever been right now. Um, not cryptocurrency, stock market. So we're in a fantastic market for buyers, uh, but <laughs> it's going the the bubble is going to burst. We just don't know when. Mm. And if you're writing it on the way up. You're gonna make a ton of money. You just need to know when to get out. The problem well, is it keeps getting bigger because people go, "It's doing well, buy, buy, buy," and then it, it, this always happens. Well, no, yes, this, yeah, there's, it's always it's always very sudden. It's also <laughs> so. also it's it's God a bubble. It. It's a breathing system, right? Like <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like lungs, o- over, yeah. right? Long so the stock time. market yeah. is the biggest it's ever been. Yeah. Sure. Remember all the crashes. Remember fucking real estate crash yeah, done forever yeah. like 10 years ago. Oh. Remember the dot com crash. Yeah. There's the uh. Great Depression. Ever heard of that? Like like these yeah. are all things. So yes, it recession. grows and it shrinks rapidly Always, and it yeah. grows and it shrinks. The problem is if you don't have the money sitting aside yeah. that lets you survive rich. that point after mm. the crash, mm. then you're going to be butt fucked for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's that's why I, I always say to you guys, which is like. Look, don't put any money into it that you're not willing to immediately yes. lose. Oh. But who are those types of people? <laughs> well, the people who are wealthy. Right, the people yeah. who are wealthy yeah. are those who can go, ah, oh, whatever. Here's fifty thousand yeah. dollars. If it fails, who cares? Yeah. Like yeah. you know, like those are the people yeah. that benefit. Right. And again, that's how that's how Vegas works too. Yeah. The yeah. fucking high rollers are the ones who make the most. Eventually, yeah. because they're willing to put up the most, yeah. because they can lose the most, and it yeah. doesn't matter. They play the odds. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a sick problem. Well, the uh, the thing about it right now, right at this very moment, is that the odds are the best. <laughs> so, and they they absolutely are. It's not it's not it's not a lie. It's I mean like it's one hundred percent true. Yeah. And if it gets any bigger, then I'm wrong, and it's even better. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, you're well, right. I, yes. So so yeah. but okay. The only way I could ever be wrong about this is if it crashes literally right now. <laughs> then okay, well then the odds are not very good. <laughs> well, so see this here. going up two days. From yeah, now. yeah. So, <laughs> it could be. You, you never know. I yeah, know. no, but that's that's huh. the thing though too. It's like the people that are going to make all the best already kind of did. Yeah, they're done. You know, like like get rich doesn't work for regular dudes who found out about the get rich plan. It's, get rich yeah. works for the people who thought of the get rich plan. Yeah, like the, I mean, go watch Wolf of Wall Street. Where they discovered that the best way to play the stock market is to charge people service fees. You mentioned hedge fund managers before. Hedge fund managers are people who make a business out of investing in the stock market. Not that they ever make any fucking money off of it. Yeah. They take other people's money and charge them, and then they get rich. Well, that's what we're we're gonna get into all this later. Hopefully, Lawrence, when we're talking about the exchanges for cryptocurrency. Yeah, because yeah. that's the first thing I realized. It's like what? How much does it cost? If you wanted to go buy into Bitcoin right now, you have to use Coinbase, Coinbase or some oh. sort of service like. That. How much is the service fee for that? So Coinbase charges. If you transfer, I think it's. Let me see. If you transfer five thousand, they tra- they charge you seventy five dollars. Seventy five dollars for five thousand. I, I believe do- U.S. dollars. It, it may have been somewhere on the order of seventy five to one hundred dollars to transfer five thousand. And how much is five thousand dollars? Well, you can you can put it into what what you want. So Bitcoin, eth- Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin Cash, or Litecoin are the things you can buy on Coinbase. Okay, now. so I don't want to pull out a calculator, but seventy five dollars into five thousand, you can figure out what the percentage increase would be required for you to pay back your service fees for getting it. Oh, I see. Plus right. whatever service fees is gonna take for getting it out. So two transactions, Correct. putting money in, taking money out, you have to factor that in. I'm just telling people, no, no. because I don't think they realize, this is where you get butt fucked yeah. really, really yeah. hard, is you have to factor in how much it would cost you to put it in and take it out, and then how much interest you would have to gain or how much the value of that thing you bought into would have to rise to be able to get that out. Because if you do it at any other time, you are losing. Yeah, no, no, okay. absolutely <laughs> true. There's a, there's a safer version of this, and I, I my my knowledge might be outdated. I worked in securities briefly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was working in life insurance, and it was always bet on mutual funds. Well, because they're- You have to do it for years, though. Yes, yes. That's, that's the no, thing, though. It's I know. Here, it's here, almost if you scary. want your hit, yeah, yeah. Sure. No, but, Play the stock market. Think about this. Think about this, though. People, Damn, go to people, Vegas. People are making their salaries, their month's salaries, in a week. You got to stop doing that, dude. I know. No, but, it's no, not sustainable. If that made sense, yeah. then 
society crumbles. No, it's absolutely not sustainable. But what I'm saying is it's happening. Sure. Yeah. Regardless of whether or not I, you guys don't like it. I know, it's but that's like saying, that's like saying so. I won the lottery. I know, no. It no, happens. That's, that's not not it happens. It happens. That's this not at all true. People is, win the lottery all the time. This every day. This is Eric Belfort or whatever. Belfort. Uh, what? Him on stage going, look at my boat. That's one of that's two not boats. At all. That's not at all what no, I'm, I'm saying. No, I'm saying, I know, but it's like when you tell, when you sell people on the dream, they get bright eyes well, in their, don't uh, choose to uh, understand what the dream I'm entails. Just, Bruce isn't doing any selling right no, now. No, I know. Yeah, I'm, whether I'm just, you know it or not, you're selling them. I'm, I'm just, no, I'm not. I'm actually not. I'm, I'm try, I keep telling you both sides of it. Yeah. Because both sides of it are, yes, number one, people are making a shitload of money. Uh, and they really are. I mean, like, yeah, really rich are. people are, normal people are. If you go if you go look at the subreddit, that's what people are doing. Mm -hmm. um, Although, and, well, yeah, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I was, was going to say, say the, the, but the subreddit stuff's real interesting. Fact of the fact of the matter is, nobody's really lost any money yet. And when they do is when it will actually become a regulated market. Mm. That's when it this when it crashes and it blows up or whatever, then everyone's gonna go, What the fuck? This all, like, where's this all my sounds, money? This all sounds very selective. No, like, it's, 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 it's that's what happened. Well, I'm just saying Adam, there, so um that point has come a few times, and people have managed to manipulate the system such as it is to prevent themselves from losing anything. Yeah. That mm -hmm. makes any sense. God, well, yeah. I mean, there, there, there's a story I remember years ago. Uh, do you need to add read? We can talk about this later. Yeah. Oh, yeah Sorry. I've been, I've been waiting. Like on I told that. you, we, we go on forever. All right. Yeah. We're, uh, and, and hopefully we will. This is this shit's really <laughs> fascinating. Um, just as a preview <laughs> after the ad read, I've uh, basically I've got some of the because uh, I guess. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the the most interesting part about this debate and the one that will survive for years is whether or not cryptocurrency as an idea or as a monetary philosophy is better for the world or worse. Because if it's better, if it's better than, than government regulating capitalism, the idea is going to come back. Um, and, and if governments can't control it or they can't move fast enough, mm. then we should probably prepare for what the future is going to look like in terms of money and what it's going to do to society. But first, we're not there yet. We still live in the meat space. Which means you got to eat some meat sometimes. I don't want to eat meat anymore. I just want to eat pills. Well, Bruce, good for you, because uh, Blue <laughs> Apron also has a vegetarian option. Oh, okay. and now they offer Whole Thirty if you're if you're trying to get some of 2017's poisons out of your body. Uh, Blue Apron uh, features Whole Thirty approved recipes each week, like Mexican spiced barramundi with avocado, uh, togarashi chicken lettuce cups with avocado, and kale and sweet potato salad. So if you're trying to if you're trying to New Year New You all that stuff, 2018, if you're uh, on the detox kick. Uh, Blue Apron has you covered, at least for the uh, number of meals you choose, because it allows you to do that as well. Uh, personally, uh, New Year, New Lawrence, I'm going to be taking a closer eye at my weekly deliveries, because if you go on to BlueApron.com, you can actually, it'll show you a wide array of, of menu options, and you can pick the specific ones you want. I typically just let it ship whatever, provided it wasn't lamb. Girlfriend's not a huge fan of lamb. But uh, now I'm actually going to go in, check those calorie counts uh, per, per uh, meal, and pick the leanest three that I can. That's how I'm gonna be New Year, New Lawrence. And also, uh, because Blue Apron sponsors this podcast so regularly, it's time for another episode of Cooking with Lawrence, where I give you a top cooking tip. Uh, this week's tip, order your, order your cooking staples on Amazon. You don't need to go to no store. You're going to Blue Apron, so you don't have to go outside. Why go outside for olive oil or salt? Just buy the stuff on Amazon, you're done. There you go. Good tip. I'm a professional chef. <laughs> I like your tip is don't leave home. <laughs> Never leave home. Don't. Just stay inside. Get a knife sharpener, too, but that was already a tip. Yeah. Uh, and Blue Apron is treating uh, DoTube listeners to $30 off your first order. And that's with free shipping by going to blueprint.com slash soup. Uh, you can check out all the, the menu items and get $30 off your first order with free shipping. That's blueapron.com slash soup. Thanks for the sponsorship, Blue Apron. You keep, our, uh, you keep our meat bodies running while we're mining crypto and making loads of money. <laughs> loads <laughs> I, of cash. I came in late. Uh, what is the Whole30 thing? Uh, it is a dietary plan okay. designed to like get uh, processed foods and stuff out of your system. So it basically like I don't know how I guess thirty days. Okay, I believe so. I haven't read into it too much myself. Not I'm 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 just counting calories. That's that's how I do it. But yeah. for those who prefer the the more exotic, uh, healthier options, it's, I did that. Too. You had to clean all this junk out of me. That's why I ran into the bathroom. I'm not sure if I can hold my mud anymore. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you dosing on uh, Exolax or whatever it's called. Uh, Miralax, yeah. Nice. So it's like if I ever have to pass gas or anything, I'm like, this could be the one. Might not be. I don't oh, know. Interesting. I'm like, oh, an, I see. I, I'm like You're Edward James almost. <laughs> yeah. I might. Like, I I I I did stop and look at the adult diapers and went, maybe. I just always wanted to just do that just just <laughs> to try. You seem like you're doing better though. I'm doing much better. That's good. I'm surviving. I'm really glad about that. Is it diaper I, fit or what's that? Oh yeah. Well, today was the last day of me being on antibiotics. Sorry, we're over the ad hey, read, right? Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're Does Blue Apron want to hear all this? Yeah, yeah, we're done. Brown yeah. Apron. Yeah. Uh, so, I, um, I don't know. Did, did you guys have any more debates about the current state 
of crypto. I feel like I feel like Bruce is, you know, given that he's researched it probably the most among us, so at least its current state, uh, is pretty dead on. Like, n none of the developers of Bitcoin, no one who espoused it, said that this is what your life should be about. They, to a point, as far as I can tell, all said, do not put money in this if you can't stand to lose it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So they were all pretty uh, responsible about it and what it could do. Um, but then ensuing drama about the blockchain, about forks, of, and philosophical debates about how Bitcoin should be managed have popped up and uh, really divided the community to the tune of like, so uh, there was a new form of Bitcoin, Bitcoin XT, I believe. I'll buy it. How much? Um, well, uh, it would be nice if you could. The problem is, uh, and th this is one of those instances that'll come up when we're talking philosophically about crypto, but so Bitcoin was where it was, had its block size set to what it was and was experiencing major like engineering issues. Some people insisted that it didn't. Those people also tended to have multi-millions of dollars in Bitcoin. Funny how that works out. <laughs> uh, so they launched a fork of Bitcoin and said, okay, let's try a new experiment. We're going to up the block size and we'll do it like this. And then some people were like, okay, cool. I'll start farming that new Bitcoin. Those people got DDoS'd and like to the tune of their city's internet and the five cities around its internet got destroyed because they got DDS so hard because there is a, there are people with a lot of money in particular bitcoins or altcoins protecting their investment and they're protecting their investment exactly so they it's they so have cyberpunk it is right it they is. have vested yeah. interest in keeping the system where it is even if it's not the best system for everyone involved sounds awfully familiar doesn't it um <laughs> freemasons around the country <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of gets to some of the some of the philosophy about uh <laughs> cryptocurrency bitcoin or altcoin so the first the guiding principle it is, is decentralized there is no government there is no person there is no group of people that can manipulate this currency Except that there are and they're doing it. Uh, so that's that's when it gets weird. The could could this technology theoretically be used in other applications other than you know money? Like could this be the future of voting? Like I, I always wonder if there was a way to. And it feels like it opens up a can of worms, but mm, if you could talk about this. if you could somehow vote on your phone, yeah. wh whether it be with a fingerprint, facial mm -hmm. scan, something, uh, and then like maybe a picture of the room to show that no one's holding a gun to your head. But like something like that, would more people vote? I, yeah, of course. I think yeah. American Idol easier, yeah. proves that. The problem is, and this is what's endlessly fascinating to me, and then this is sort of a layer above all the, the philosophy of crypto. But we live in a world where, uh, to, to borrow an Adam parlance, even though <laughs> I'm saying it more that. than I'm saying Not it more this than year. Yeah, <laughs> new year, new Adam. Um, technology can change our society, but some people either can't wrap their heads around it or refuse to. And by that I mean with digital voting. Some people are just uncomfortable with that to the point where they don't want it. Even if you could walk them through the math and say this cannot be copied, you're still dealing with... It wouldn't matter. Yeah. No, they sure. still want to vote in person. If people don't trust it, they no. don't trust it. And, well, and then I'm the problem have, is other politicians... Both. Well, other politicians would use that as like a rallying cry. Yeah. Mm. Is that, I mean, we saw voter fraud shit coming up in this election. Yeah. And that wasn't even a factor. Could you imagine Trump campaigning while electronic voting was going on? Oh, yeah. He'd be yelling at cell phones and <laughs> being a, his old typical Luddite asshole self and, and a bunch of, like, people who aren't as immersed in technology as us. It would, like, I'm not going to say they'd believe it, but it would strike a different chord. Hmm. And that's fine. But I feel like, and this is, this is getting into mind freak territory, <laughs> uh, which I actually do have a mind freak later. I'm sure you do. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's it's not it's getting to the point where it's not about who believes in what. It's about who can adapt their mind to embrace certain ideas. I remember when I first saw The Matrix and some people just couldn't get the basic idea mm -hmm. of yeah. like a simulated reality. Imagine living in a world where Bitcoin is a viable currency, but also somebody doesn't know how to check their email. Mm -hmm. And those people have to live in this world. Mm -hmm. And they're they're like their uh, retirement's getting fucked with because of all this currency exchange. And they just, it's like in math class, if you miss one or two lessons, suddenly you have no idea what's going on. Mm. I genuinely feel for people that like either can't or don't want to follow all the steps that got us here because it's only going to get faster. Well, no, it's the Android versus Apple conundrum. Hmm. Uh, Android will come out with something years ahead, Google Wallet or something or uh, wireless charging. And people go, ah, don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Or like, you know, a smartwatch, any of this stuff always comes from Android first or something. It's experimental. It's new. It's different. Uh, and then people just kind of brush it aside. And then Apple, because they're marketing geniuses, mm. find a way to make that technology look new and fresh 
and easy to use. So that's what's going to happen. Someone's going to Appleify okay. cryptocurrency where they go, it's so easy. You use your phone. So mm -hmm. what you're saying is already happening. Um, <laughs> uh, on the exchanges and stuff like that, Ripple was, that was the super hot cryptocurrency because it's being marketed as the, basically the- um, The layman's the, cryptocurrency. The, well, it's layman because it uses banks. And sure. because it's like, you know what? We are not worried about the decentralization and all that other stuff. That's too, that's way too complicated. This is just going to be for you guys to be able to transfer your funds between banks and stuff like that. It'll be easy. So how does it separate itself from? And but, but doesn't that take away the the unique nature of cryptocurrency? That's what everybody says. Yeah. And but it didn't matter because now it's just dollars. Just a few days ago, Ripple peaked and they were second in market cap only to Bitcoin, and meaning they were the second biggest cryptocurrency in the world. Uh, and for a, for like a few days, the CEO was richer than Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> um, and because they marketed correctly, days. they, they mm -hmm. and, and that's that's the thing right now. That's that's really scary about cryptocurrency is that anybody that tweets something like one of the CEOs of Tron is another cryptocurrency. <laughs> yes. um, that he if he tweets something about Tron, the either it'll go way up or way down because of what he tweeted, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's just, it that's that's why it's so volatile. That was the case with <laughs> isn't, Bitcoin. Isn't Tron for a long time. like a trademarked phrase decentralized what right. uh, like well i mean like okay. it, i don't know if it matters but either way the the stock is or the stock the crypto is called yeah. trx oh okay so okay. but the tr name of the company is tron nice so uh, trx I think tron, but it's tron, tron may actually be a name it'd be like uh, copywriting their name the name mark oh i see what you're I saying you know, i don't know i all I, i'm basing this entirely I on a, a good question i don't know, I don't know. i'm basing this entirely saying, on a made for tv movie i saw where there was a little asian kid named tron i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, in the in the case of how seriously should you take this, yeah. someone naming their cryptocurrency after something that they haven't even done the research to see whether or not it's this, like, this is, like this is the they're same allowed problem. to do it is always It's funny. the same problem I have with eSports, where I'm like, I want it to grow up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it's like, if you're going to call your fucking money Dogecoin, <laughs> and you're not going to take it seriously, I'm not going to take Which it seriously. Worse, I was going to say, that's one of my favorite stories. Dogecoin started as a joke in 2013. Yeah. Uh, and basically like it tanked and like, it was like 2015 or 2016. Everybody was just like, ah, that's a joke. And now since it's a cryptocurrency, it reached a 1 billion market cap because people are buying anything cryptocurrency. Sure. And the CEO came out and was like, what are you, what are you idiots doing? Don't buy this. No, like he's it's, selling. it's nothing. You don't, it's worth nothing. And then it went up. It now it's, now it's like somewhere in the neighborhood of, or just, just crossed 2 billion. It's a little, a little lower, <laughs> but that's a per perfect example of basically it's like, People will buy anything yeah. cryptocurrency. Well, we're right going to get into a weird situation. You know how you'll like check a Twitter bio of like some nine-year-old kid who called you the N-word on social media. Mm -hmm. He's a CEO. You, yeah, you check in at CEO <laughs> of you know Swag Swag yeah. Inc or whatever. Swag coin. Click that's coin. What, that's what. <laughs> well, that's what's going to be in the future. Oh no, it's clam gonna, is like, losing it. It's going. You're going to a nine-year-old's going to you know own my ass. Like he well he, he's not going to own you. But he's going to be like, I'm a this coin millionaire yeah. or yeah. something like he's because he invested in this one thing. It's worth a million dollars, but no one knows what its actual value is. You yeah. know, like that's true. That's what's going to happen. Well, there's a lot of people. Um, and, and in fact, there was a big bank theory episode on it. But there are a lot of people who like mined Bitcoin in 2012 just as a laugh mm -hmm. and then put it down. And now they have like 10 sitting somewhere and they don't know where it is. So they're trying <laughs> to find old hard drives with yeah. their keys on it. Yeah. Well done. What a, I, I feel like that's, you want to talk about cyberpunk. Could you imagine like the real world, like going through a goodwill just to find old hard drives that have crypto keys still on them that oh, you sure. can just redeem? That's digital treasure, man. That's Junkers. Worth money. It's yeah. like if you threw away all of your anime figures oh and then it turned out anime figures were mm -hmm. really valuable they're, they're and not other garbage. Of dollars. And then, <laughs> and the My fellow Americans. When, digging through. <laughs> in the grim Dumpsters. future where only outlaws have sex, yeah. the truly virtuous have anime figures to protect it, themselves. Well, I, I know it's going through a lot of people's heads too where you, you see this stuff because it's constantly going through my head where you go, this is all made up. It's all fake. Nothing's there. But then you go, well, yeah. so was everything. Yeah, well, yeah, was yeah, like, the only reason why we ever put any value to gold is because there were more rocks than gold, and we're like, well, we can't really use rocks. Well, there's, there's a finite amount, and it's, exactly. a, and it's the same yeah. with Bitcoin. Yep. Um, Artificial scarcity. So so the interesting thing about that is, and they call it fiat. Fiat is basically just... The best it, car It's a ever. dollar. Oh. Uh, it's a dollar, meaning it's a, it's a, it's a fake currency. It's, we assigned what a dollar is worth <laughs> to it, um, and we're like, that means it's fake. It's a fiat currency. It's just whatever you want. Yeah, arbitrary. And that's exactly what... Uh, that's what 
any of these cryptocurrencies are. Sure. So when people are like, cryptocurrency is bullshit, I only deal in the dollar. You're yeah. like, well, that's the same thing. Yeah, they took yeah, it off yeah. the gold standard a long <laughs> yeah, time yeah. ago. They're, yeah. they're exactly the same. Now the dollar's more established. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's why you see it that way. And regulated. Yeah. That, that was, and regulated. That right. was the thing that uh, cryptocurrency interested me in was when they said there is a finite amount. I did like that because yeah. the, the whole theme, the idea of like, well, just print more money. You're like, well, no, now inflation's going up. Now, now gas is $15 a gallon instead of five, right. but... It didn't fix anything, and this this is uh, an argument that comes up with uh, UBI, the Universal Basic Income, mm. uh, where there's they're really good. I always fucking butcher the name, the Kurziger guys or whatever. They do the animated videos, the little birds. Oh yeah, yeah, you told me about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, great oh. channel, horrible name. Uh, they uh, they did this whole thing about UBI, and it's like this real, the real basic breakdown is like everyone, no matter who you are, this because it sounds a lot like communism, but it's like everyone. No matter what, gets fifteen thousand dollars a year. A year, mm -hmm. the the base that you need to like to live. Mm -hmm. um, and there's like studies that show that rather than spending that stuff on drugs and alcohol and stuff, people would actually go do something they want to do with their lives and their careers. Like, is this the job? You have to think to yourself like, if I could just live off of what I'm given, it, would I do this job? Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the the answer is like yes, because people like they seek professions that are fulfilling. But then other people go, no, I'd actually go, I'd go back to school. I'd do something like that. And so you mix that with cryptocurrency, then yeah, now we're in super I'm cyberpunk. In I think that's what a lot of people want uh, from cryptocurrencies. They want that sort of like security of, well, no government's telling me what to do with my mm -hmm. money. I got to hold it on. You know, like, I mean, and like James said, I don't think that that's actually the case. I don't think that's ever going to be the case in this world that we live in. I think there's going to be some sort of regulation. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of you're living in a nation. A lot of yes. well, a lot of people think that it's just going to Bitcoin's going to get regulated out of existence. Hmm. They're, they're saying basically it's like it's going to become money. Governments are going to clamp down on it and it'll just be like, well, all right, well, one Bitcoin's worth a dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like and uh, it can't change in value except for every seven days. And then the according to what the U.S. government says or whatever. Yeah. yeah is, so that's what that's what they think is going to happen. And I think a lot of people I I don't necessarily know this but this is kind of what I think I feel like the more that we recognize this stuff know how it works and and also possibly participate in it the more that that can't happen I, mm. I, I would like to see I would like to see this this sort of thing because mm. I I am more of a proponent of like the people right it's democracy basically mm -hmm. um, the people running things uh, as a group rather than you know uh, one specific government or whatever um, that's, you know, that's why, but the, that's, I'm, you know, I like you'll have to battle. The universal truth is that people are lazy. Uh, absolutely. And, and also corrupt. And, yeah. And, yeah. and sometimes Bruce, it's easier to not educate yourself. It's just, just tell me how it works. Mm -hmm. What, which button turns on the TV? Well, you see, if you press this one, it turns on the, I, there's just want the one button. <laughs> there's also a thing. It'd be it'd, like, if you could hit the yeah. reset, something like this would be way more like interesting to me. If you could hit the reset button on everything, but we're already starting from a situation with, massive, yeah. massive incongruent wealth distribution in this world, yeah. in this globe, where where so much of the wealth is held by so few. And it's like, I, it's not like they're just gonna hand out the Bitcoin to make things fair. Right, right. You mm -hmm. know, like you're gonna get what you can put in mm -hmm. and that's gonna be in that's going to be tied to whatever wealth you have and whatever is a val of value now, mm. whether it's land or whether it's wood or whether it's go Adam's gold in the safe or whatever it's going to be. So Doing at some great. point you're going to have to exchange something for it. Well, that's, that's another thing that a lot of people say is that what happens with cryptocurrency now is that there are, let's say 10 billionaires yeah. that go, I'm going to buy a lot of Ripple. Yeah. Do you want to do that with me, other billionaires? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they all they use the big red phone and just talk to each other. They all get mm. together, they do it, and they go, we're going to buy on this day. Yeah. We're going to tweet it all out and say, this is the coin of the day, right? This is the thing that we add. Oh, it's a great buy. And then they've already bought in. It yeah. goes up. They sell. And then it crashes. And everybody else that went along with them was like, what the fuck? And they're, I mean, like, people are saying, and obviously there's no real, I think there's some proof of sometimes that's, that's happening. But... Uh, at least in the internet age, it, they get called out a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you know who it is, or it's like uh, one of the one of the guys that influences a lot of these cryptocurrencies is John McAfee. Oh. Um, and he's like, <laughs> he's, he went crazy. He's a long crazy. Time ago. No, he's yeah. crazy. And he and he tweeted about how he bought hookers and blow with with Bitcoin and stuff like that. All right. Um, one of the things. I mean, there's the dark web. You can do a lot. But Once again, watch Mr. Robot. Great show. But he's also yeah. tweeted or like he always tweets about 
what's which coin to buy yeah and everyone's like dude this guy's so fucking corrupt like he's obviously way inside long yeah, before yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like and and i don't know it's again i don't think this is, if don't you're trust one person no. if you're comfortable getting the table runoff from billionaires you can make money <laughs> but that's essentially what it amounts to yeah um but first given that we still live in meat space new year new you uh sorry uh one quick aside for one of our sponsors oh, yeah. this show is also sponsored by mac weldon Let's talk about one of the hazards of Bitcoin mining. Static. When you're in your Bitcoin farm, you don't want some errant static electricity to build up on your clothes. Hmm. So you go in there with nothing but your underwears. That's right. Uh, so you don't shortchange any, any of those NVIDIA video cards you bought. Well, the room's hot, too. Yeah, you don't want to sweat on everything because yeah. there's all that processing in there. <laughs> nah. And who wants to be in there with some garbage cut rate, tight white underwear? No, thank you. Mm -mm. If you're a man of the future, if you're a person with taste, you're going to go in there with your Mac Weldon's on. That's right. Well-fitting, perfectly tailored, smooth and comfortable underwear for you to monitor the health of, of all of your uh, crypto racks. Um, they also make shirts. Uh, this is something that I've implored in the past, but uh, man, just it's worth it's absolutely worth it spending an extra couple of bucks to get something nice for yourself. A couple of Bitcoins. Yeah. Uh, That's like twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just just buy yourself a couple of Bitcoin and get some Mac Weldon in the offing. Uh, I had this, sh let me tell you a little story about Lawrence. I had the shower head and it was all messed up, man. And water was spraying everywhere. Did not, uh, did not give in a, a pleasing pattern on my back, <laughs> except I used it for like a year because I just didn't think about replacing it. And then I don't know what happened. I was shocked awake one day. I was like, oh, why do I have to deal with this crappy shower head? Went on Amazon, got a new shower head for like 20 bucks and it's great. It's wonderful. All I had to do was think about it and make that little improvement in my life. And that's what you can do too today by buying underwear. Uh, 20 bucks. You need 20 bucks. Also, um, <laughs> we also have a 20% off uh, code for you. Oh, yeah, this is something I read. If you're older than eight years old, you can wear underwear that's soft, supportive, and fits right. That's my promise to you. That's the, that's the cyberpunk feature you can live in uh, in about a week or however long it takes to ship. But just go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using our code DUDE, D U D E. Uh, I'm pretty close to running every day of the week in Mac Weldon's. Don't quite have it yet, but I will soon. I, uh, I earmarked some earmarked some money for crypto, earmarked some money for underwears. There you go. That's what I'm going to invest in. Don't so. you need to buy a car? Yeah, I need to do that too. <laughs> well, that crypto money is going to turn into that car payment. Perfect. That's yeah. a short-term investment. <laughs> but thank you, Mac Weldon. Uh, once more, that's uh, MacWeldon.com, M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com. And use our promo code at checkout, S-O-U-P. Or sorry, uh, dude, D-U-D-E. Oh. At checkout for 20% off. D-U-D-E, 20%. Thank you, Mac Weldon. Dude. Get that underwears. Uh, okay, so we yeah, we've been kind of iterating through. I, I have like some of the bigger, the bigger, uh, the bigger philosophical aspects. And, and you guys have talked through most of them, actually. So, number one, um, cryptocurrency is decentralized. The idea is that uh, no one person, uh, no bailouts, no, no manipulation, no control of any kind. It's totally up to how society... Guides it. The problem is that control still still exists. Uh, the the guiding counselor that lack thereof refuses to change the block size of Bitcoin, which fundamentally operates how it works. Uh, there's the aforementioned DDoSs. There's the manipulation by crazed, deranged millionaires and billionaires. What is the GIF? What is he hitting on there? Uh, that's uh, that's Bugs Bunny as Bitcoin hitting altcoins down oh, with a okay. scepter. Nice. But that's yeah. another huge Crypto thing. Crypto gift. And, uh, yeah, on the, the subreddit right now, is yeah. everybody yelling at each other about which one's going to be bigger and which one's better and all that stuff, which is hilarious yeah. to me. Uh, all the millionaires just laughing at you. I mean, I don't know if subreddit is full of millionaires. Uh, they're probably, no, pull, the no, millionaires no, no, I'm just saying the millionaires. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, yeah. This is when all the Apple fanboys and the Microsoft uh, fanboys are like, Apple sucks, Windows sucks. I'm going to prove how much I love Apple yeah. and buy more Apple. I'm like... Bill Gates is like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> don't hurt my, my billionaire tears. <laughs> so, <laughs> on, the, <laughs> Idiots. on the subject of decentralization, Mike Hearn wrote that Medium post, uh, basically saying Bitcoin has failed as a currency. Um, not, as a, not as a speculative uh, commodity, but uh, he writes um, uh, basically about uh, the block capacity. Why has a capacity limit not been raised? Because the blockchain is controlled by Chinese miners, just two of whom control more than 50% of the hash power. Hmm. At, a recent content, at a recent conference, over 95% of hashing power is controlled by a handful of guys sitting on a single stage. The miners are not allowing the blockchain to grow. Goes on to summarize, if decentralization is what makes Bitcoin good and growth threatens decentralization, then Bitcoin should not be allowed to grow. Mm -hmm. Or said in another way, anything when it gets big enough is going to get controlled by a small group of people that band together to protect their interests. So, 
it's almost human nature. You can design something to be decentralized. Or hoarders. Yeah, or, or hoarders. Um, yeah, we are hoarders. You're right, up. You're absolutely right. Well, it's, it's the the surviving the long winter. It's. Even. I mean, it's that, but it's. I feel like it's it's that plus with any system. There's going to be people who are willing to dive into it and learn it backward and forward and figure out how to manipulate it, mm. and other people that just want the one button. Every single time I play online Street Fighter, exactly. That's what I learned. It's exactly. <laughs> it's it's that, but it's yeah, it's that. But, but I did all the training missions. How come I didn't learn that? How come you can beat me as Balrog? Because they put in the time. They, and they, they've been yeah, they do it nine hours a day. Oh right. <laughs> and uh, another thing, it's interesting you bring up fighting games. I uh, this is something I actually had to train myself out of. But when I was first playing fighting games, I wanted to, like win honorably. Mm-hmm. I wanted to like if I yeah. were if I was like in a bullshit Not combo, sweeping, I'd dr- sweeping, sweeping, sweeping. Oh. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. if like if something worked, I'd stop doing it yeah, because yeah. I didn't want to just win with one thing. Yeah, there are people who that is never a concern. Yep. And financial people don't give a fuck. If it's legal and it makes money, sometimes even if it isn't legal, oh, I'm going to yeah. do it anyway. And those are the people that are always going to corner these markets and they'll always have the power and they'll always convince you that it's in your interest to just take the one-button solution and they get paid while that happens. Well, Lawrence, so. that's why I like you because you are honorable. Same with James, same with Adam. <laughs> and poor. And, and Yeah, as I say, but there's... And, it's, and for me, it's always been a dream of mine to actually become, not wealthy, but just sort of like well-off Honorably, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah. good luck. Like, yeah, I know. Takes, it Go takes two trains with weighted clothing. Well, here's the thing. I, I think <laughs> I, I think it's doable. Not just not as fast as the liars mm. and the cheaters, um, but also I can live with myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's great. Well, that, that's the question I always want to ask someone. Like, I want to meet someone who's just beyond rich, like a richer, or richer, sorry, Rupert Murdoch, or like uh, mm. who's the dude Bezos or whatever. Well, Jeff Bezos, yeah. Jeff, the richest like, man in the world. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to. Or wait, I want to. What? What about that? Chi- uh, what's that Chinese guy? Jeff Bezos is worth like a hundred billion dollars. Sure the Chinese guy's got more than him. Either way, regardless. Sorry, I'm saying to the point where money means nothing to these people. Yeah, yeah, not anymore. Like I want, I want to pick their brain and go, why, why don't you stop? Like what, what is, what is too much? And I, I feel like it, there's not much separating the guy who's got the heroin addiction versus the guy who's got the power addiction. It's just hmm. where, where they they were at the, you know, the high school orientation that day because <laughs> uh, yeah I'm, I'm like I'm with you there Bruce where it's like I want to live comfortably I want to be okay but I never want to have so much money I don't know what to do with it because I feel like it is this thing and I know right he's like I don't want to be rich and it's successful like, it's pressure you mean but sort of it's like at some point yesterday I was like what's the point like well, what are you what are you doing like in, cool you control the world you own everything now what you're gonna die in defense you know? well you're gonna be remembered Historically, your legacy, legacy will be remembered well, forever and ever. That's because of fuck if you're dead. people are the ones who are always going to be remembered the longest. But, but um, that's why they do it. I was going to say, say in defense of billionaires, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing to say. Some they of them it. just get that way because the thing that is their passion isn't necessarily the money. The thing that is their mm. passion becomes valuable to other people, mm. and they just keep doing what their passion is. And then that yields more and more money because now it's become indispensable to everyone else in the world. Yeah. So, you know, there's a certain, I don't know that Bezos wakes up every morning and thinks about what else he can conquer, but he's like really passionate about Amazon and finding a way to break down the retail space right. such that whatever. And it just happens to be exactly in line with what all human beings wanted. And so no. now he's profiting immensely from it, you know, yeah. but that's not everyone, obviously. No, like, no. There are people that are like, they've never done a thing in their life except for advise on the acquisition of other companies to create a giant octopus of, of communication networks. And that's all they, they all they want to do is because yes, it yields more power mm-hmm. and control, but yeah, they're not necessarily always driven by money. It's yeah, just, yeah. It's just watching like the, um, there's that Enron documentary, smartest guys in the room. Have you seen that? Those guys, it, it's just so weird to see like there is just this monster inside of them where it's by day they're selling and trading fake shit and ruining small mm-hmm. economies or big economies and then at night using the company expense account to get hookers and blow and it's just this fast lifestyle that they're mm-hmm. used to and they need large amounts of money to pay for it mm-hmm. and you're like you're not much different than the junkie down the street so this is mm. this is why i like cryptocurrency because there's less of a chance i think of that kind of stuff happening only because it's smaller than the stock market or the net or nasdaq or the government or anything else mm. it's Still relatively new, um, and yeah, there are. I'm sure there are a few billionaires that are in on it. Bitcoin's Actually, I know. Downturn. I know there are. Um, we're talking about Ethereum's it. turning around. Uh, oh, no, Ethereum's not turning around. It's been going up for days. Oh, it's, it's, um, it's been going up for days and days and days. But regardless, it went up $2. Uh, I, I, that's why I, I like it because I'm trying to get in early on this thing. 
before it gets like regulated all to hell. And then all of a sudden it's only uh, 10 billionaires that are like, well, the, we are the only people now that can regulate this. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's not the case right now. Um, there are lots of weird little altcoins that come out of nowhere that are, that are people that are like, I'm just passionate about cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. I'm just passionate about making a, a cool new coin that'll do a certain thing. Mm. Um, and that's, that's what the subreddit, the cryptocurrency subreddit is all about. A lot of people on there are just like, dude, there's this one cryptocurrency that's actually doing what it's set out to do. Invest in that one. Hmm. And everybody jumps on the bag when they say, yeah, you know what? That's cool. I, I like that. I, Someone on Reddit said so. What's, what's I trust him. Genuinely Plus curious. Crusher. What's an example of like a cryptocurrency that's trying to do something for good other than break away from the financial constraints of the system? Yeah, we, we should go on the on the subreddit because there's a bunch like they're like somebody will Is post there one that like well, a cryptocurrency that supplies water to like starving African nations well, or anything. No, or? They're, so they're, the problem with that is though, and, it's Bruce and Rich, Bruce, you may you may get around to this. People will talk up a game to drive up the price of a particular crypto that they're invested in. Oh, absolutely. They'll, they'll totally do that. But, to, and, but again, if they post yeah. a bunch of evidence as to that this company is doing what it set out to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tron's it, white paper is copied and plagiarized. No. no so, well, Tron is constantly argued about on the subreddit. <laughs> yeah. People are constantly well, like, oh, this one's uh, it's totally fake. It's totally real. It's totally fake. Um, so but there are like there are certain like, ones called modem. Uh, it's uh, that that one they're they're saying here are the reasons why modem is actually like they've they've managed a million transactions in a month mm -hmm. or whatever else like they're actually working as a cryptocurrency mm -hmm. um, because there are places that will take just random cryptocurrencies uh, that aren't only Bitcoin. This is this is the so. same thing as VR, where I think right now VR is new and scary for a lot of people, but we just saw at CES that they're doing the wireless version yeah, of the Vive. Vive. Yeah, and give it give it five more iterations of that where VR will no longer be VR. It will be, I'm, I'm gonna go play, or I'm gonna go see the game. Oh, I see you. I'm going to the, I'm going to the mall, you know? It's like, because yeah. I just saw someone post uh, on, they just tweeted us, but they're saying, people's uh, reluctance to go with cryptocurrency well, is its affiliation with like darknet and yeah, black Sean, markets too, yeah. and mm -hmm. creepy shit like that. You, you gotta get away from that. And it, once again, you don't call VR's it cryptocurrency. It just becomes money. Yeah, your your life yeah. just transitions. And you don't even notice. Uh, the same way we have pretty much become a cashless society. Yeah, pretty damn close. When things like Square came along, went, yeah, no problem. Psh, done. I know credit cards. It's all these gradual moves. It can't cryptocurrencies. It's a punch to the face. It's way too fast. Well, it's, that's why it's fifteen years away of actually yeah. being in any use. It was, and, and that's why I say like the dot com bubbles. A good example, again, I read another article about how yeah. the dot-com bubble in, 19, in 1999 was huge because everyone's like, pets.com and anything.com and all the stocks went up and then it exploded, right? Mm -hmm. It all went down and it crashed. It took about 15 years for people to be like, all right, I'll, I'll reinvest in this. Mm -hmm. However, it created one of the most important technologies. It's not the most important technology in human history, the internet. So it, it became something that everybody knew about because of that bubble. And that's kind of what's happening now. Uh, cryptocurrency, that's why everybody's saying like, look, cryptocurrency is here to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is a bubble and it pops, that doesn't mean it's going to go away. Um, it's just going to take another form. Well, that's the, the cons that's why it's so important. My message from this would be like, how many how many hours would you say you've put into oh reading gosh. about? So many. I mean, like a like hundred hours. I, probably about, a, I mean, like 50 hours, maybe conservatively. Or I've something. been doing this for about a month. So it's probably about a hundred hours worth of reading. So, like that. so unless you are in a situation like Bruce, where you're prepared to put that kind of time and research and yeah. self-education and you have the flexible income to gamble on this system, not because it's not because you may lose everything, but because it's it hasn't leveled off to whatever like. It's a bubble, yes. Um, but if someone invested in like Amazon during the dot com bubble, they're mm. not pissed off if they invested in swap it, right? Like it's not the same. But yeah. so so do your research and figure out what you're gonna do, but make sure that whatever you're putting into it is money that you can afford to have fluctuate back down. <laughs> yeah. It's gone. not money you're be gonna gone. be relying on for maybe fifteen years. Yeah, no, I would say just be gone. Which you, is yeah. weird because then at that point you might as well be just doing like a fucking retirement IRA and invest in index funds because that's slow get rich anyway yeah. too. I you know, know, like I, it's I totally agree. It's get a it. really weird situation. The, the thrill isn't there. Yeah, yeah I totally no, there's understand. No thrill. There's no thrill. Um well because like people were uh, I posted a video about like my office recently. People were like, when'd you buy a house? How can you buy a house? Like, I'm not rich by mm -hmm. any means, but I've been saving in mutual funds for about 20 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And that's how I could afford to barely have a down payment for a home mm -hmm. because I put time into it. And I've been like, I've just been saving ever since God, I think I was maybe 16 when I first like put my first like hundred dollars away. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I did some weird stuff when like, uh, I remember when I got my first tax return, my mom was like, buy gold and silver. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. that's sitting in a safe somewhere. Yeah. But that's like, that's the one weird gamble that and buying machinima stock um, that I've ever had in my life. But it's like, I, I've just, I've always been a conservative person where I'm like, yeah. and I, I think part of that was to growing up, uh, getting into the securities game and life insurance game of like, I was taught very early on to do, it's the long play. Uh, invest in yourself, invest for your retirement. This is how a mutual fund works. This is how interest works. And that to me was always very simple. I've always had friends who are like, oh man, this stock's hot. And I'm like, you have a problem. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because there's not much difference from this and then you going to Vegas over the weekend because I think you're just looking for that thrill. Yeah, I've it, never been a thrill seeker in that way. Yeah. It's how to get rich quick, slowly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like basically yeah. the name of this book. I think it's the same, like I love going to Vegas and I love gambling, but I never gamble with money that I can't afford to lose, sure. right? And I don't, I don't ever do a situation where I'm not controlling myself, and that's how you should do it. I would also say, if you're interested in this, you should do as much research as Bruce has, a hundred hours or something, like spend a lot of time mm. before you even drop a dime into it. And at the same time, since the things are gonna be so similar, look into research about standard investments yeah. and the stock market and mutual funds and ETFs and all kinds of things like that and just like see how those things work too. Because if anything else, you wanna be diversified in where your money is sitting because if one fails, then at least you'll have the other. Mm. If they both fail, it doesn't matter. We're all dead from radiation poisoning anyway. Right. So right. like, <laughs> well, it's, I'll it's, sell you uh, caps. It's, yeah. funny, it's funny you say that. I hate gambling. Um, I, I will not gamble unless it's craps. And the reason I'll gamble on craps is because craps typically has the best odds in yeah, Vegas. Even better um, but it's also the long game. And it's also, it's, well, it's also a long game. And yeah, you stuff. also get to play with people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're not playing against other people. You're mm -hmm. playing against the house. That's why I like this stuff because to me it feels like there's some skill involved. There's there's like there is actually skill involved with this stuff if you're doing research and like looking at it and going like, all right, it's probably going to hit its height here. Uh, it's uh, this is probably where you should buy because it's at its lowest here. That that requires some skill. Um, there is luck involved. It's much like poker, uh, but there is also skill, and that's that's why I enjoy this stuff because like if 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 you like the subject matter and you're willing mm -hmm. to put the research in. Then I you know. then it's passion. It's yeah. not it's not right. my retirement. Right. You know, right. like no no no. You know, this is not my retirement. You yeah. know this disappointing in Vegas though? Cirque de Soleil. Oh yeah. Don't <laughs> invest in Cirque de Soleil. <laughs> what no, I mean you say you're gonna put fifty on black, go, you know what? I'm gonna go see a giant snail. <laughs> Much more fun. Just like craps though, Bruce. There's always someone who shows up and then bets on the no path line. Yeah. You're like, fuck off. I know. Dick. Get out of here. What's your problem? You're what are you table. sociopath? Yeah. <laughs> Those people are in crypto too. Absolutely. They so are. watch 100%. out for the no path. I know. You're, you're totally right. I don't oh. know what you're talking about. I feel uh, they, they bet against the table. Oh, yeah. 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 Permit, permit me to, to provide some summarizing thoughts and we can move on. Um, mostly just about. Because, because Bruce, I agree. I think, I think this is something that's it's going to be a factor. So for me, it's it's interesting to appraise in this early experiment of sorts what's gone right and what's gone wrong, and more fundamentally, the, like the ways that they tried to solve some intrinsic problems of the human condition and weren't able to. So as I'd said before, like the the decentralization meant to prevent uh, theoretically prevent companies from being so so free with money because Corruption. they expect yeah they expect yeah. bailouts and stuff like that problem is you're just trading off a, you're trading off bosses artificial scarcity something adam mentioned so there will only ever be 21 bit, million bitcoins in the world since the rewards are halved every 21 or 210,000 blocks so all the bitcoins in the world will be distributed by 2140 it is essentially like the gold standard the idea being that if you really think about it currency is us inventing tickets for ourselves to expend the Earth's resources. Essentially, we're paying to use power, water, food, uh, entertainment, things like that. Air. Air. Problem is, the Earth doesn't have infinite of that, but we have given ourselves infinite position to mint money. So we're basically just burning, uh, we're like burning resources and allowing ourselves to ignore the repercussions of that. A zero-sum uh, uh, system would fix that if there's only so much money to go around. Um, and also it would potentially, uh, it would potentially have different impacts in terms of how like money is distributed in the world, hopefully. Uh, problem is, uh, it's been a long time since any 
society on the earth has been on a zero sum economy as far as I know. Mm. And as population increases, that means wealth is divided amongst more and more people. It's supposed to reflect the problems of the planet, uh, but we've excused ourselves from that for the time being. So going back to that is theoretically more moral, but we have no idea what that's going to be like. And will people be willing to actually live in a society where you can't burn resources all day long while ignoring the problems? And then finally, the privacy of cryptos. Uh, you mentioned the Silk Road and stuff like that. So uh, transactions of Bitcoin are untraceable. It goes to a, uh, a digital signature and there are ways to associate uh, transactions with people, mostly through behavior. Like if there's a bunch of transactions going to one address, it's hot. That that person's probably a vendor or a retailer of some sort. That just happened with Tron, actually. Uh, everybody really? thought the Tron CEO sold off because there, six million got sold somewhere or moved, mm -hmm. and everyone's like, "That was the CEO. He's he's selling. He's bailing out." And everybody was, you know, calling, calling, basically calling him out and being like, "You did this. You did this." And he was like, "No, no, I didn't. Else. No, I didn't. That wasn't me." So. And, it, so, and, the, and, the, trust and the, their uh, their asset <laughs> dropped. The Tron asset dropped oh, because of that. So he sold. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "All right, I'm out." <laughs> so that that privacy is is theoretically a virtue unto itself. We all like to be private. It also potentially does limit corporations' ability to know you and what you do. Uh, that's something that I've I've been concerned about. The dos the digital dossier that's kept on all of us about the things we like and buy. Um, transactions being uh, separated from that uh, would prevent that from happening. Um, man, every time I look at my bank statement, almost on light items, Bank of America would be like, hey, do you want to add this deal? Do you want to add this deal? That is so fucking creepy to me. My bank should not be talking to hmm. independent businesses trying to drum up business with the person I hold money. Whatever. Oh, they, they sell your info. Yeah, of oh, course. Right I can't away. wait to. <laughs> Immediately. Uh, we noticed that you like the film Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. When I, bought, I bought Blade Runner on YouTube, and, and YouTube.com was awash with Blade Runner videos for a long time. <laughs> but uh, the bad part is, yes, that means that uh, Silk Road, like people buy drugs. People buy humans. Uh, fucking the sex trade is bad with crypto. And that's not good. Um, how do you how do you stop that sort of stuff? Privacy is good, but people use it for bad. So there's some real raunchy shit. Um, I mean, pedophile videos are made and financed with cryptocurrency. And when you put your money in crypto, you're not necessarily contributing to it, but part of that cycle. I mean, everybody would say that, well, the dollar's been used yeah, the to US buy dollar's been used however many terrible things. You're right. I mean, if you bought a car, we invaded Iraq, so... You can do the math there, I guess. Yeah, it's like how people blame the, blame the Nazis for Hugo Boss. They didn't know. <laughs> they just said, I'm, I want to make a very nice outfit. Are people upset with Hugo Boss? I don't think so. Uh, well, people, I always... No, that, you that, said blame the Nazis for Hugo Boss. It made it sound versa. like people are upset with Hugo Boss. Yeah. And the poor Nazis were caught in the middle. I know, I know there was... What was it, were the, the corporations? It was Volkswagen, yeah. uh, IBM, and... Yeah, Hugo Boss, Hugo where they're always Boss. like, you know, IBM made the machines that made it. It's like, Listen, I don't think they knew what was going on. You can on. say a lot of terrible things about the Nazis, but they did not look bad. They, oh. look good. they looked fucking great. They ruined it for best, everyone. Best looking army, bar none. I'm yeah. just saying, they took black. Like, black looks good with everything. Nazis, Spartans, everyone else. Yeah. Oh, Spartans look cooler than you Nazis. You know, it looks kind of, those little berets. Spartans look cooler than Nazis. <laughs> they looked cool, but they probably didn't look as cool as they did in 300. No, you're right. But, you know, because yeah, so, right. they crab walked. Nazis the were the, the only ones that looked like bad guys. <laughs> Yeah, like, no, it's yeah. great. Skulls on helmets. Yeah. It's just like so all black and red. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the sorts of uh, lingering issues that will pop up again. Um, and it, it may be this sort of thing where there's just no programmatic solution to this sort of thing. I don't know what you do. Uh, Samuel Jackson had a good idea in Kingsman. Kill oh, them all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thin the herd. I mean, <laughs> that, kill them all. who knows, man? Maybe we're looking at a nuclear war. That'll thin... Then not the populace a little bit. Shouldn't talk about it so flippantly, but fuck it, our president does, so why can't I? Uh, that's what does. the dinosaurs did when they launched that meteor. Yeah. Bring it on, they said. <laughs> the southeast didn't like the northeast, and they said, fire the meteor! <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, he had a button, too. <laughs> but if you're, hey, um, uh, real quick, if you're gonna, hey, if you're gonna die in some cyberpunk future war over, over crypto, All right. you better look good doing it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, New Year, New You, Stitch Fix sponsors this podcast. Check out these pants. Yeah, check out those pants. Oh, they're pants. great. So Stitch Fix is a, uh, a fashion by mail service because I guess another theme of 2018 is not going outside. Uh, basically, you sign up. Uh, you take this kind of cool quiz, actually, to figure out your, your fashion. You can click on, like, different shirts and different colors and different cuts. You fill out your, like, body type, your, your size, your measurements. And then a stylist will pick items to match what you have demonstrated, ship them to you in a box. You can try them on, uh, look at yourself in the mirror, get, get Myron a little bit, uh, keep what you want, send back what you don't, and they'll just bill you for what you keep. So essentially you have a personal stylist that, decide, that finds clothes for you. 
and um, you get to keep what you want. And if it doesn't fit, you send it back, and they don't charge you for it. Essentially, there is a there is a twenty dollars styling fee, but whatever you keep, that is applied in credit towards it. So if you keep anything, um, you're essentially just buying the cost of the clothes, and you get a free stylist out of it. And let me tell you, um, I can tell you through experience, other people are much better at dressing me than I am myself. So take advantage of that. You might be good at, at farming cryptocurrency, but that person over there is really good at picking a shirt for you to do it in. The, Unless you're just doing it in your underwear. The system legitimately works, I will say. Yeah. Like, I, the first round, I kept a sweater, and then, you, they, you're right, you give a bunch of detailed info, which I was very, I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this out. So I gave them all the detail info. I was like, this is what I didn't like about this, 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 this. The second box I sent, I kept 90% of the stuff. I sent one thing back because they sent me another sweater. Oh. But it's a different color. Well, we have a special deal. If you keep everything in your box, uh, and that can be underwear, socks, all sorts of things, uh, you get a 20% or 25% discount on the whole thing. And that's at stitchfix.com slash dude soup. Uh, once more, that's stitchfix.com slash dude soup. For that, Adam, why don't you stand up and give everybody a nice little gander of them pants. pants. Mm. Actually, yeah, nice. That's a good fit. Nice the jeans web. there, huh? Look at that. Nice yeah. jeans, yeah. Adam. You gotta, you gotta throw them up real high. There you uh, go. Look at them oh, go. There, there it is. Got some, got some ass going Look on. at that go. Yeah, They're woo. beautiful. Look at that. I've got a piece of meat. Swipe him some crypto. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I know. Well, you guys saw me on New Year's. I, that was my entire Stitch Fix outfit. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The you shoes and actually, the, the, the nice uh, flannel. They, 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 so they actually have, you like this, James. They actually have button-up shirts that fit me. Oh. As, a, as, a, as a fellow broad-shouldered man, yeah. those are hard fucking to hard to find. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for the sponsorship, Stitch, Stitch Fix. Once more, that's stitchfix.com slash dude soup for our offer. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys for talking to me about crypto. Okay. Uh, man, time flies, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We got some time. Um, I'll save. I'll save my mind, freak. I feel like people's minds have been freaked enough. Whatever happened to Hard Net and Lawrence? It's coming up right oh, good. now. Okay, good. Yeah. So uh, let's roll see. Roll the how header. Can... Roll the brand new header that you just. Oh, made I didn't make one. Then. Shit, oh. I need to. <laughs> oh, you calling him out? Yeah. So well. I thought he was going to improvise. Something. <laughs> well, one of our computers did. crashed because I was yeah, mining on, cryptocurrency on, me... <laughs> on it. Not what? Yes, watch it go. What? Why did you give me? Oh. I don't know uh, if it goes that far. Yeah, so, all right. Those are gonna be really hey, hard to Careful with that one. I, no, get, I loosened plugs these easy. up specifically to do this. Uh -huh. So there's our broken computer. Except right. then I had to plug in another one because the mic's all moved. Oh, yeah. My oh, computer yeah. turns there's out. Our broken one. There's so much dust on that thing. Bruce had to give us his computer. Oh, here so you can. Just a pile of screws on the ground too. You guys can that peek at the other camera. That's the live camera. Tekken. That's the recording oh. camera. Oh. Hey, oh, I don't think it's in the. I think I checked to see if anyway, it's in that box. I tried to give it to you. I thought. Yeah, but I don't think Tekken's in that box. I think that's why I didn't take it. Uh. So yeah, had spent basically the entire morning swapping out hard drives and trying to get a PC up and running. Cool morning. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a rough webcam. Also, they uh, pillaged some mics from here yesterday. Good old so Brio. Go find those again. Oh, that's not, right. not bad. No, it's a little yeah, a little cockeyed. But <sighs> which one? This one? If you just yeah. knock it down to the right there, well, the just, just like knock it down. The, no, no, no. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. It's really easy. Followed uh -huh. by another cord. Like the the cords. No, I know. Is yeah, they fuck it all up. It happens. <laughs> Better. You got it straight. But now it's... It is too high. Yes. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very hard. It, Sometimes it's easier to try and bend the monitor. Huh. <laughs> I, it's... Hey, that's pretty good. That's good. Alright, fuck it. Logitech did a weird thing where they, they figured it out. They figured out the webcam bottom part, and then they said, let's change it. And they got rid of it. Yeah. The, yeah. the ball bearing that thanks we needed. For, uh, thanks for the heads up, Meg. I've been tweeting at us. Got you in the ops center over here. Uh, Alright, right, so... Last winter, Cat Piano Classics is pretty much quite literally what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's the classics played on right. a cat piano. Yeah. <laughs> so let me. Uh, did we ever what? crown like a winner of 2017? Uh, no. Oh yeah, you never did the the, the guy who does the jokes. There. Never had time. Damn. Okay. That oh guy, yeah. The guy who does the jokes. I think uh, the guy who did the sounds. The beat. He did all the weird. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, he was trying to hit the highest the high notes. notes. Trying to hit the yeah. high notes. I give to him. Um. So let me. Let me. Oh yeah, imagine. That's a good one. So here's a little cat piano for you guys. I'm gonna warm up first a little. Get some... Is that you, Yoko? Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Oh, that's nice. You can see his cat piano classics written on there with a the little sharpie. Oh, he plays the melody. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> look, at the way, look at the sharpie. It looked like... Huh. He wrote it in blood. Yeah. YT cat. Psychopath. It wasn't blood. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. All right. So we don't want to get a copyright learned, strike. Remember when he learned those lyrics from Forrest Gump? Yeah, that was weird. Remember? 
Forrest Gump was on the oh, John Tom Lennon, right. show with John Lennon. I hated that part of the movie because no religion too. And everyone goes, ha, 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 ha. I was like, who the fuck's this guy? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I didn't know what the fuck the Beatles were. I thought the idea was that John Lennon had already written that song and was quoting himself in that interview. No, he uh, he got he the inspiration. Everyone else is dumb. Yeah. Forrest Gump made everyone yeah, else good. Right. I see that. No, I, that makes more sense. Anyway, yeah. the runner up. young man's got to pay. <laughs> the run. Uh, oh, the yeah, this is raw I water. I know about this. I've been meaning to talk to you guys about this. It's okay. great. All right. Well, water's gr uh, raw water is great. Hmm. So uh, the uh, Christ. All right. So uh, Doug Evans, the the brilliant mind behind the Juicero, the Wi-Fi encrypted juice machine. Uh -huh. They refuse to juice things until it connected to the internet and released the DRM on your packet of juicing items. Was that the thing that came in the packet that you could just squeeze in? Yes. You paid. The yeah. packets were like two dollars each. Yeah, and you could just squeeze them with your hands and get more juice out than this like, yeah, Wi-Fi enabled juicer. You paid two hundred and fifty dollars or something for That's a awesome. machine that would squeeze it, but it was just like applesauce. It's so great. Anyway, love this uh, world. He's formed a new company called Live Water, and he's selling something that he calls Raw Water. Oh, that's so good. Which is essentially, he sneaks into private property, uh, buckets up a bunch of spring water from an unfiltered, like, unpurified spring, and then sells it. Like, laden with micro it's got a ton microorganisms of bacteria and all. Like, yeah. Is this illegal? Is this a joke? Well, I mean, like, he, he's just selling it to random millionaires. Yeah. Mm. $36.99 uh, $36 per 2.5 gallons. Only fifteen dollars per refill. That's not um, bad. I don't I think mean, it's oh, awful. It's, hold He's on, here's a quote. The monorail here. business. <laughs> uh, quote: It has a vaguely mild sweetness, a nice smooth mouthfeel, nothing that overwhelms the flavor profile. Said That's Kevin Freeman. That's the talking. A shift manager at the store, uh, I guess, where they sell the raw water. Wait, quote: They have shift managers. That doesn't sound very. <laughs> Bottled water is controversial. We've curtailed our water selection, but this is totally outside that whole realm. Oh, so great. Uh, so yeah, I love this stuff so much. Uh, so he's basically selling water from the ground, unboiled, yeah. untreated, on anything, which is apparently supposed to be healthier for you. I don't no. know if anybody's reported getting sick from it. I haven't heard of any any of that either, which is weird because I would expect that would have happened by no, now. No well, one's those, admitted to drinking it, right? And the people who do get sick can afford to go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. So they're better than us. Let's see here. I, I, re I read about, I'm trying to remember exactly where, the system called Source. Wait. So what does he do? He sends you what? He sends you like a, basically, a, a it's not a thermos, but you know like the large bottles that uh -huh. uh, Arrowhead will give you? Uh -huh. One of those. So right. it's just bottled of, water. Well, it's not bottled though. It's from like a lake somewhere. But it's in <laughs> <Yeah>. a bottle. <laughs> I mean, yeah. They just don't filter it. They just don't filter it. There was a man pouring some water out of my hose into something the other day. Was that him? <laughs> <laughs> water. Okay, yeah. I mean, that water is rotten. You shouldn't be using it. <laughs> Oh, wait, here we way. go. Oh, okay, this, um, sorry, I may have been mixing things up. I don't know that, uh, maybe Doug Evans isn't, isn't sneaking in and stealing water off of, off of private land, but this is what is even more hard net. And so, uh, quote, this is from an Ars Technica article, quote, three years ago, Singh began selling raw water collected from Opal Springs in Culver, Oregon, which he claims contains unique probiotics. Customers in certain areas of California can now sign up for raw, raw water deliveries for as much as six forty per like, gallon. Like uh, yeah, few of the concerns shared by Singer and other raw water dr drinkers are legitimate. Um, let's see here, rainwater struggle with lead in drinking water. Mm. <laughs> those are those uh, unique probiotics. Mm -hmm. so, well, so lead. No, he's saying instead of the get the lead water that's in your normal drinking water, get yeah. mine that has weird bacteria in it. <sighs> okay, it's healthy for you. It's great. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm sorry I didn't. In the in the midst of, of yanking out hard drives, I didn't have time to. S I I remember reading. I dug. I fell down the raw water hole a while ago, and this whole thing basically started because like dudes would sneak onto property that's not theirs, bottle up a bunch of water, and then sell it at festivals as raw water <laughs> for like five times the amount, and fucking idiots would buy it. Um, well, rich idiots. Uh, yes, rich idiots. Wait, hold on. Rich idiots are your best friends. You can heal them with crystals, you know. Pseudomonas ole olevorans in its water. An environmental bacterium and opportunistic pathogen. Uh oh, uh, that's okay. That's cool. So yeah, uh, it's really expensive. It's got all sorts of shit in it. It could be really bad for you. Yeah, I, I'm. <laughs> it's weird that I haven't heard about about is this any on goop. Like, Sadly, no. Up on goop yet? Oh, well, maybe. Let me try. I bet it has. I want to see a picture of that egg in the cooter. Yeah. I bet. I bet. <laughs> goop. I actually just read another goop article the other day. It was something crazy. That Wait, like doing. an article about goop or an article on goop? It was an article about goop. Oh, okay. I was okay. not on goop. Well, so reading the articles on goop is really funny too. Yeah, I should do that. You're right. Let's see here. What is this all about? 
Uh, Does probably have a parasite. Here's what she just owns it. it. No, she what? just owns it. She okay. Owns it. But it's all from her lifestyle. Right. She's not only a client, she also is a client. She also shoves eggs up her snatch. Mm -hmm. How do you develop your treatment? Why are you leaving, Chris Martin? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Take Apple with you. <laughs> My treatment is based on knowledge of the essences, a community that lived outside of Jerusalem during biblical times. There it is. Well, they He's clearly close. had the parasitic <laughs> what? game on lock. Goop wins. What is this? When he, when, in those days, when but, a healer learned of a worm infection, they would put the patient in a tub of milk until the worms would come out to drink. Parasites love milk. In fact, many people who think they're allergic to milk actually have a parasite in their system. Whoa, classic, I didn't know that. Classic mix-up. Yep. In my experience, an eight-day mono-diet goat milk cleanse, <laughs> accompanied by a specific vermifuge made of anti-parasitic herbs, is the most successful treatment. Right. Thank you for your experience. Okay, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Uh, I'm gonna try that. Anyway, if, so yeah, you're gonna need both those things. If you're gonna get on raw water, you also need to- wait, hold on. I so I wanna shit already. all over that, but I also got acupuncture over the weekend. Mm -hmm. My work? mom offered to pay for it. How did it, it go? Like a, well, I'm feeling better. Well, that's good. So case closed. I don't know. Good well, night. but I've also been on antibiotics for two weeks. Oh, you mean medicine? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and uh, and been doing a lot of. I, I'm I'm at that point where I'm like science. Do anything. Yeah, science yeah. and religion. I'll take both. Yeah, yeah. Heal me with crystals and give me the chemo. That's fine. That'll help yeah. your attitude, basically. Yeah, I feel you good. Know? Anyway, so I don't know. Oh, here we go. I want to believe in it. All right, I, I think this is the uh, this is the choice quote. I'll pull this out and put it against Cat Piano Classics. Uh, so Mukan Singh, uh, uh, I guess also known as Christopher Sanborn, <laughs> founder of Live Water, told the Times that tap water was dead water. Uh, excuse me, quote, dead water. <laughs> quote, tap water? You're drinking toilet water with birth control drugs in them, he said. Birth Chloramine, water. on top of that, they're putting in fluoride. Call me a conspiracy theorist, but it's a mind control drug that has no benefit to our dental health. Uh, here's a parenthetical from Mars Technica. There is plenty of data showing that fluoride improves dental health, but none showing water-based mind control. <laughs> what you gonna do? Uh, so get rid of all that shit. Just pump it out of the ground and put it in my body. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Mukan sings uh, raw water versus Please cat call piano him Christopher. classics. <laughs> Christopher Sanborn. Not Mukan uh, Singh yeah. or whatever. Do we vote now? Uh, let me. Let me. I feel like play it's another fair. cat piano. Yeah, I, was gonna, I really gotta pee. Can we? Can I just cast my vote and then I'll go to the bathroom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cat piano. All right. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, two for cat piano already. Oh, I'll give it to cat piano. All right, that's sweet. Well, wall water is interesting, but I, I think if you keep digging on the uh, the <laughs> is shitty that, is that Metallica? Yeah, it is. If it you is check out the uh, the shitty Kickstarter subreddit, yeah, gold, so much gold. <laughs> Those people harden it hard. It's great. Enter Catman. He called it Enter meow, Catman, right? Meow, 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 meow. Yeah, you got it. All right, I, yeah, cat piano's for me. I, that, All right, cat piano wins absolutely. Raw water, I thought was great. But I don't know if it's necessarily hard netting. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have dug in a little further and found that story oh, okay. about it, the start of it because it was just dudes like sneaking onto some dude's property and stealing his water, <laughs> and then they'd sell it, and they consider themselves like tech visionaries. I fucking love it. Cat Piano's fucking awesome. Oh, there he is. There's Mukan Singh. Christopher Sanborn. Nope, Mukan Singh. No. Oop. Go drink that ocean water. Maybe it's I raw. Should, shit, I should have just. This one photo is pretty good, of him sitting barefoot on a log. Staring inspirationally into the <laughs> distance. God damn it. Maybe it should have just been fucking uh, tech CEOs in general because they're all garbage. Uh, <laughs> hope you're watching, Bernie. <laughs> also, Are I got this tech company? Uh, I don't know. We Maybe. stream video, right? That's something. Uh, one quick announcement for you guys. We're doing a live show. Funhouse Live. Live show. I meant to mention it at the beginning of the show, but I didn't. So there's that. Uh, but let me. What? It, hey, what is this show? You know? Uh, what's it gonna be? We're asking you to spend your hard-earned bitcoins on something. <laughs> it's time for you to figure that out. You know, New Year, New You, we're behind that too, so... I ran uh, into at least three people who are going. Yeah? Oh. We went to Universal Studios for Josh Flanagan's birthday, and I think three people who worked there, and, or sorry, one person who worked there, two people who were just there, were like, Hey, I'm going to your live show! Oh, that's like, awesome. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Good job. So I, I know already three of you. Yeah. <laughs> But we're, we're putting on a live show, and uh, we have discovered ancient teachings from a very noble and wise man. I got it. Corner Mandingo, I gotta put up. Uh, yes, Corner Mandingo himself. Damn it, it's not math. If you're thirsty, I just made some uh, raw water. Whoa. Wait, with your penis? <laughs> you're like the mariner. <laughs> <laughs> they need to put that in the sun show. It's like, look out, it's the mariner. Hold on, almost done. <laughs> yes, there this. he is. Oh, oh our, leader, our glorious leader. He's beautiful. Pioneer of the Tiberius Method. Yes. Which has taught all of us to become the... <laughs> Can't see oh, it, James. Mm, 
James is bowing. James is James is genuflecting. Again, is it? Yeah. Uh, as as one does. Respects. He is paying his respects in front of in front of the great Mandingo. Mr. Mandingo and I we're uh, we're on a first name basis. Oh, I have That's yet. High Captain Mandingo. Oh, yeah. oh, you're right. I've never seen him. I don't know Just that I can look him in down. the eyes. But he know. he has a five step method to becoming a perfect human being. Oh yeah. Um, and we have I wouldn't say we've mastered it. The best we can do is paraphrase it. Uh, because honestly, it would probably kill you if you were to hear mm. it yourself. We have we we've been around it, so we're a little more uh, acclimated. Got a callus, you would say, but we're, um, we're like level level F. Yeah, no, yeah. at least F dash two, something like that. Yeah, F dash you dash four one. I'm only double G. What? I think it's, yeah. I thought well, the, you, you I mean, the corner himself. No one actually hears God talk; they just hear uh, um, Snape. Instead, mm -hmm. Snape does the talking for him. So Good all that's, true. that's how. So that's the kind of where Snape, mm. where the Snape, to corner Mandingo's God. Just come to the show. It's gonna be funny. Yeah. Uh, here's here's a quote from the uh, the show description for those listening. A uh, quote: Have you ever wanted to be a better person? Do you ever feel like some invisible force, ghosts, is stopping you from draining every drop from life's proverbial bucket? Are you stupid ugly? Oh, yeah, well, are. fret no more, because for the first time ever, five of the greatest life coaches are combining their philosophies into one simple course, the Tiberius Method. Rooted in traditional Toltec wisdom beliefs, five agreements in life are essential uh, steps on the path to personal freedom. This isn't a path any general admission and above ticket holder will have to walk alone. No, you will have us and your fellow show viewers to guide you. We'll show you how. Yeah, January 18th uh, at the Regent Theater in downtown L.A. Come, it's gonna get weird, uh, weird and funny. <laughs> Those are the things I can promise. Uh, and you will leave a better person weird first. Then, let's, then let's promise funny. weird. Then funny first. after that. Guaranteed uh, yeah. weird. We uh, we do have the ticket numbers. It's selling out. It's not quite there. No, no, it's but gonna, it's gonna still some tickets left. Yeah, yeah. I well, I, I know it's gonna happen. VIP's gone it's, though. Well, VIP's way gone. But yeah, yeah. what this always happens. I know this happened with Let's Play Life. People wait to the very oh, end, yeah, and they're like, yeah. I couldn't get in. It's like. If you ever think of, it's going to be a good show, it's not going to be just us on stage playing video games or anything like that. It's like, no, I'm like, it's not just us doing our thing yeah. that you see us on YouTube. It is a unique thing that we are putting a lot of time and effort into. We're sharing our philosophies. Yes. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, we, price on corner Mandingo's we philosophies. are, I know, it's us Lee hours as <laughs> okay, well. All right. well we won't take if you haven't fully Mr. embraced well, these philosophies, maybe we should discuss it before Mandingo's next week. Philosophy. It's going to be a good show. Yeah, so please come out and see us uh, Thursday, January 18th. Uh, Thirty dollars for general admission. We got a few of those left, so get on them while you can. And hey, you know what? Thanks for listening to today's podcast. Ninety minutes. That wasn't so bad. We got to talk uh, talk all the way through crypto. And hopefully, Bruce. Hopefully, you plugged some of your investments. So I didn't plug any of my investments. <gasps> you started trading. I didn't do any. Uh, that's legal, by the way. You're allowed to do that. All right. Um, <laughs> no, actually, I wanted to say at the very end of this, none of that was investment advice. So do what you think is right. <laughs> Don't do what we said or didn't say or whatever. Do what you want to do. Well Invest in you. Not. Invest in milk. Uh oh. <laughs> Everybody needs milk. <laughs> you got those going parasites, it's going to suck them right out. You know, babies need milk. That's true, yeah. they do. Parasites Invest in it. Where them. are they going to get it? Their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. Uh, thanks for watching slash listening, everybody. We'll be back next week with another podcast. If you're watching live, stay tuned. Post show's coming up. There's a lot of fan art to get through this week. So see you in just a minute. See us. Well, also, we, we've been... Not, I don't want to say prisoners, but we're we're in this room and we're, we were for the long time just surrounded by full screen people. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, you probably saw the news not too long ago, but this building had massive layoffs, but that freed up a lot of room for us. So it's like it totally sucks. Any.